everyone and welcome back as always i'm your girl candy washington so before we dive into today's episode which is all things the real housewives of beverly hills we are gonna dive into all of the latest headlines legal woes divorces fighting friends and is the franchise over but before we dive in go ahead and like subscribe and share and grab your conspiracy tea head over to candywashington.com backslash shop or click the link that's pinned at the top or down in the description box so with that let's go so our first story is a report that kyle and mauricio's marriage is turning ugly well divorce separation marriage, who knows what the hell they're doing these days. Maybe they're just swinging. Maybe they're keeping it open. Who knows? But it is turning ugly. Now, I had first thought that they might reconcile three or six months, but now I'm kind of having a change of heart. I kind of think that it went too far too long. And by that, I mean, it may have crossed over the threshold for it to come back from. Maybe, maybe not. My gut says they'll still get back together, but we'll see. Now, let's dive into this report. This is from All About the Real Housewives. It says, a new report claims that the separation between Real Housewives of Beverly Hills couple Kyle Richards and Mauricio Umansky has turned petty. It looks like Kyle Richards and Mauricio Umansky's separation has turned from civil to contentious in the blink of an eye. Kyle Richards and Mauricio Zemanski has been publicly separated since September, but word on the street, the two have been privately separated since at least the beginning of 2023, if not earlier. Now, I believe that. I think that they were separated. Well, let me put it this way. Uh, we are now in 2024. The filming was 2023. If you noticed, Kyle said in one of her confessionals when she was talking about the death of her friend, um, Laureen, she said three years ago, Mauricio would, would have been the person that I would have turned to about this. Three years ago when she's filming would have been 2020. So what did she mean by three years ago? When did they really separate? When did things really go south? My gut is 2022 and then like 2021, 2022. And then with the death of her friend, it just really set it off. Okay. For the most part, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills have remained friendly for the sake of their four daughters, Farah, Alexia, Sophia, and Portia. The two have also kept things pleasant because they continue to live together in their sprawling $8 million Encino estate, albeit in separate bedrooms. Yeah, they live in Encino, not Beverly Hills. During a December interview with The Messenger, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills OG pulled back the curtain on her, quote, awkward living situation with her estranged husband. We're fortunate enough that my home, that, that my home can fit us all to spread out, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star explained. And I'm also very fortunate that we get along and care about each other very much and that we are a family no matter what. Kyle, stop lying. Okay. If we are to believe that your separation with Mauricio is legit, and I do, I do think that they are legitimately going through a hard time and all of this stuff. The reason why neither one of you have left the house is why nobody leaves the house because they don't want to have, quote, abandon the marital home. If one person leaves, that's why even though Tom Sandoval and Ariana, they're not even married, that's why neither one of them was leaving that house. Because once you set foot out, you can the other person can say you abandoned the home. And if you abandon the home, then you can you can forfeit your legal right to it. So this whole we live in this huge house and we're so amicable, we're a family. Meanwhile, Kyle is out here tonguing down Morgan Wade. Mauricio is out here having like uh, his own midlife crisis, skiing with these little influencer snow bunnies looking like a freaking old weirdo. And I'm not age shaming. I'm to all the woke folk. I'm not age shaming. I'm just saying it's a little weird when a man is, I don't know, in his 50s, 60s, playing in snow buddies with girls in their like 20s. Like it's just, it is what it is. So I'm not being bigoted or anything like that. So don't act like you guys are like best friends and you're just living together for the sake of the children. 
that's a lie in my humble opinion. You're living together because if you guys actually get divorced, you don't want to forfeit your right to, to claim the marital home. That's why nobody's moving out. That's why you have all these divorces, even over in the Real Housewives of, of Atlanta, Drew Sedora and her wackadoodle um, estranged ex-husband, whoever the hell he is. Again, that's why neither one of them are leaving the house because you don't want to abandon the marital home because you don't want to forfeit your rights to the house. Okay. The 54-year-old notes that she and Mauricio prioritize spending time together as a family with their four daughters. Mm-hmm. That's always been what we stand for. That has not changed. And obviously, some days are not as great as others. She said at the time, some days it's like, oh, it's a little awkward today. And other days, it's like nothing ever happened. And we're all just sitting watching TV as a family. Because of this, it wasn't surprising to learn that Kyle Richards and Mauricio Umansky spent the holiday season together with their daughters at their home in Aspen, Colorado. While the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills couple are trying their best to remain amicable, OK Magazine reports that the Beverly that the buying Beverly Hills star's recent behavior has been rubbing Kyle the wrong way. According to an insider, Kyle and Mauricio agreed to spend the holidays together in Colorado for the sake of their daughters. But the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills OG was surprised to see photos of her husband partying with several much younger women in Aspen. Not only was a 52-year-old the 52-year-old founder of the agency spotted with a 31-year-old influencer, Alexander Wolf. He was also seen partying with social media stars Lily Pons, 27, and singer Anita, 30. Like I said before, he's like his in his 50s. These women are in their 20s, late 20s, whatever the case is, maybe early 30s, whatever. This is the thing. I don't buy that Mauricio is hooking up with or dating or spending time with these little influencer social media social media people. I think that 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 whole thing in Aspen was a photo op because they are calling the paparazzi. It's called backgrid. So backgrid is basically paparazzi that you hire to quote catch you in your normal I'm just grabbing a coffee at Starbucks like please no photos I'm just hanging out in Aspen with these social media stars how did you find me you know what I mean so Backgrid is the paparazzi company that celebrities pay to take photos of them those are then the photos that will end up in Radar Online or TMZ. Of course, Radar and TMZ have their own team of paparazzi too. But whenever a celebrity wants to push a certain narrative or project or agenda, their PR team will orchestrate paparazzis to like catch them in their natural state. Like, oh, I just happened to be leaving this person's house. Like, how did you find it? How did you find me? Like, because your publicist paid them to come and take pictures of you so we can talk about them. Like, duh. I think all of that was a big social media thing. I think he got paid. I think they got paid. Um, all of that to me was for sh was nothing but sh for show. Are they smashing? Maybe, maybe not. Are they dating? No, I don't think so. Do I think any of that was a surprise to Kyle? No, because Kyle's doing the same thing with Morgan Wade. You know, all the photos we have of Kyle and Morgan is not because the paparazzi just happened to be clairvoyant and have a crystal ball to know where Kyle and Morgan are hanging out. It's because Kyle and Morgan's teams are calling them to go get paparazzi shots. Kyle spotted shopping for rings with Morgan. Really? Just happened to be spotted shopping for rings? Come on now. You know what I mean? So Kyle wasn't surprised by those photos. She probably did the photo op herself. Same thing with the whole... Um, Kyle spot it with Rihanna in Aspen with Rihanna's uh, boyfriend, baby daddy, ASAP Rocky. So this is the thing. <laughs> do you think it was just a coincidence that, um, the, do you think it was just a coincidence that Rihanna was spotted in Aspen with Kyle? I don't think so. I don't think that was just a coincidence. I think that was a photo op. But I'll tell you the person who I think was actually trying to get good press with that was Rihanna. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm not talking about this particular um, subject on my channel because it can get really, really dark. So I want to do a little bit of a caveat. 
this subject can get really, really dark. And I'm not, and I'm personally not covering any of it on my channel. But the reason why I think Brianna wanted that photo op with Kyle and with her kids and Aspen, this whole wholesome look, because we know right now, Kyle and Mauricio, like like him or not, they're hot. They're hot properties. They're all over the place in the, in, in the blogs and the spear. I think Brianna wanted to make sure that she was not getting any of this P, P. Diddy, Jay-Z, Beyonce, T.D. Jakes blowback situation, Chris Bat Brown situation going on because right when she was spotted in Aspen was when all of the Cassie stuff and the Diddy stuff was coming out. And don't forget, all of them are really together and sort of that Hollywood loop, you know, with like when Murata was with Chris Brown, she was Jay-Z's protege, Jay-Z and Diddy were really close and now all of that stuff. So I am not talking about that on my channel because it's too dark. Um, but I don't think it's a coincidence that Rihanna of all people just so happened to be at in Aspen, just so happened to be hanging out with Kyle Richards at Kibosabi hat place. That was nothing but a fluff divergent PR piece to make sure that Rihanna's brand isn't tarnished by all the other stuff that, sh that she could be associated with. Cause you really have to think about why certain quote people who are brands Rana is a brand kyle is a brand these people are brands why these quote people slash brands all of a sudden are being spotted together all of a sudden are cozying up with each other all of a sudden are having certain narratives these are just paid for photo ops you know what i'm saying so that's what i think is going on there okay let's i keep it going <laughs> Da, da, da. All right. So Kyle and Marie Seal are allowing each other to do what they want, provided they don't do anything embarrassing. Well, this is the thing. Kyle and both Marie Seal have been embarrassing with this whole situation. You know, like Kyle out here with Morgan, Marie Seal out, out here with the youngins. They're both being embarrassing. Like that ship has sailed. An insider spilled. Marie Seal has clearly touched a nerve. Meanwhile, Kyle Richards is rumored to be dating country singer Morgan Wade, although both women have denied that they're anything more than friends. I don't think they're more than friends. I think Morgan is fulfilling out her contract, and I think Kyle is attention-seeking. The insider hinted that Mauricio and Kyle's $100 million fortune is the main reason they have yet to file for divorce. Just like I said, that's why neither one of them have moved out yet. Nobody is trying to give up the rights to that home. In fact, the source noted that they don't have any intention of officially divorcing at this time. Again, it could be money reasons. They don't have a prenup. There's no denying that they push, that they push each other's buttons, the insider said, but they're going to continue to look the other way or try to. Speaking of looking the other way, Kyle recently admitted to Us Weekly that she doesn't know how long she and Mauricio can remain normal amid their separation. Kyle admitted that she's happy being single, but is still struggling to find her footing amid her new normal. Kyle, I don't believe you. I don't think you're happy at all. I don't think Kyle's happy. I don't think Kyle's happy with Morgan. I think Morgan is a distraction. I think Kyle, in the last episode of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Kyle told us in one sentence exactly why she um, wanted to separate from Mauricio and has been acting out. Did you guys catch it? In her confessional, she's it's during the scenes where she has the, um, you know, celebration of life of, you know, spotlight on mental health for her, for her friend, Laureen, who unfortunately passed away. And in the confessional, she says, um, I, don't want to spend my time around people who don't appreciate me. That right there pretty much sums up everything we need to know about why Kyle and, Mar and Mauricio are separated. She did not feel appreciated in her marriage to him. That's why she's out here doing all this attention-seeking stuff with Morgan and the tattoos and the weight loss and the acting out and all of this stuff. She did not feel appreciated by him. And I believe her. I don't think he did appreciate her. I think he took their go along to get along type lifestyle for granted. And I think once her friend passed away, I think once she hit a certain age, I think once things started to kind of 
really call her own mortality into question for herself. And we all get there if we're lucky enough. We all get to a stage in our life if we're lucky enough where we get to a certain point and we, in our own mentality kind of stares us in the face and says, well, what are you doing with this life? And I think that she expected him to step up and he did it. And I think that's the core reason of why everything has gone down between Kyle and Mauricio. Not even the cheating rumors. I think the cheating rumors are a part of it, but that goes into the appreciation. Like I've held you down for a decade with all of these cheating rumors, with you embarrassing me, and you still can't be here for me when I need you. Now she's talking about it, social media DMs and all this, that, and the third. And we'll, we'll get into that. I think I have a story about that. But that's really um, what I think is going on there. Okay. Now let's keep going. See if there's anything left with this story. Dun, dun, dun. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Put it down below. What do you think about Kyle and Mauricio's you know, marriage turning ugly. And what 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 do you think the real reason for both of them sort of wilding out now is? Okay. Now let's see. Speaking of looking the other way, Kyle recently admitted to Us Weekly, and we covered that, blah, blah, blah. In a lot of ways, I feel happy, but I'm still struggling because it's all new to me. I've, I've been married my whole life, Kyle said. We still live in the same house and we spent the holidays together. I have no idea how long we'll be like that, but we are trying to be as normal as possible in a very unnormal situation. She explained before revealing that she and Mauricio were both attending therapy. We both want to see each other happy, the Bravo celebrity confessed. I don't know what the future looks like. That's the hardest part because... The unknown is scary. Okay, so they are both attending therapy. This is the thing. Are they attending couples therapy? You know? Are they attending couples therapy? Because if they're just attending therapy on their own, but not couples therapy, then mm, I don't know. I don't know. So yeah. There it is, you guys. So let me know what you guys think. Put it down below and be sure to like, subscribe, and share and grab a conspiracy tea that is linked down below in the show notes and the description box. So with that, let's move on to story number two. Let's move on to story number two, you guys. This one is all about Kyle Richards and her failing relationship with her ex BFF ding dong Dorit Kemsley. Now I don't care what Kyle says regarding the demise of her friendship with Dorit. I will stand by the fact that I think the reason why Kyle and Dorit are no longer close is because of the Dorit and Mauricio cheating allegations. Because I don't care how close of a friendship you have. I don't care how solid of a marriage you have. Once it is put out there in the ether, in the world, in the collective consciousness, that your best friend and co-worker is sleeping with your husband, that changes the dynamic. Whether it's true or not, and that is uh, and that is what is unfortunate. Whether it's true or not, and when you sign up for the fame game, unfortunately, you also sign up for people questioning stuff. So once it's out there, particularly when your marriage is not in a good place, like if Kyle and Mauricio were in a solid place, then do I think the rumor would have had an effect? Yes. Do I think it would have had a detrimental effect? No. But but of course it would have some type of effect. Anybody who says it wouldn't, you're lying to yourself. Doesn't mean anything went down, but once something is put out there, especially on the entire world speculating on it, that has an energetic effect on you and your relationship. That is why I think Kyle is no longer messing with Dorit. I don't think it has anything to do with Morgan Wade. But let's get into what they're saying, okay? Let's get into what they're saying. So this is according to Reality Blurb. 
It says Kyle Richards has been a mainstay on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills for several years. Of course, this means that their friendships with people like Dorit Kemsley have experienced highs and lows. Unfortunately, now seems to be one of the low points as Dorit feels Kyle's close friendship with Morgan has divided them. Now, Kyle has responded to what the ladies have been saying about how she's changed over the last couple of years. As fans know, Kyle is also going through a divorce, which means many things are changing for the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star. Now, according to Heavy, Kyle used her Amazon Live session to voice how she feels about what Dorit and other cast members are saying. She starts by discussing how Dorit says they used to travel together all of the time and how the cast says she's now traveling so much without them. According to Kyle, they are talking about the same trip time and time again. She says, my last birthday trip to Mexico that they all that they turned into 12 different trips, apparently. One trip, they said it was Italy. It was still the same trip to Mexico. All these trips I went on and all the girls talk about this season. It was one trip. Kyle, you're not coming across that great. Like you're coming across a little... I don't know what the word is, a little bitter, a little mean, a little tiffy, a little defensive, like calm down, Kyle. Kyle continued, it makes me laugh a lot. It was one trip. Yeah, some of the cast, all these trips weren't included. And it was the one trip that we posted a lot of photos that they just kept talking about. She also says that Dorit exaggerated the trips they went on together in a recent recent episode of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills by saying, Kyle and I used to go away once or twice, even more a year. Now I'm not invited on any of her trips. She also claimed that they used to go on go all go on couples trips together. This is the thing, Kyle. Ding dong Dorit, she talks a lot, but right now she's talking some sense because Mauricio and PK, Kyle and Dorit, you guys were a very close-knit couple friend group. You were. You guys were traveling all the time and posting all the time and being BFs all the time. You guys were a part of the whole full Fox 5. Your little close-knit group. You were. Stop trying to act like you and Dorit weren't BFFs just because it's Mad Day. Okay? Kyle responded to the episode on her Amazon Live by saying, it shows a trip that we went on once, PK, Dorit, and me and Mo, the four of us with our kids, and then they show another trip. It's from the show. I'm sorry, I love Dorit, but you're showing a trip from the show. Let's not exaggerate the situation. My point is, you're trying to make it seem like I do all these trips without her now. There's one trip that we actually did as, uh, that actually did as couples, ever. Mm. Kyle, you nasty, Kyle. You nasty. And I'm not even a a Ding Dong Dorit fan. I'm not. I don't dislike Dorit, but I'm not really here for Dorit. But in this particular situation, I'm team Dorit. Because you're not going to sit up here, Kyle, and act like you and Dorit weren't best friends. And that PK and Mauricio were so close they were going to go into business together and they were going to do their own real estate reality television show in London. But then Mauricio got the Netflix offer for buying Beverly Hills and he was like, see ya PK, I'm going to go take this Netflix deal and do the show about the agency and my family. And then PK got left holding the bag and he did his little reality show over there in London, which I think is on channel four over there. So you want to tell me Kyle, that you and Mauricio and PK and Dorit, you didn't really know them like that? Come on. Also, you know how we know that you're lying, Kyle? It's because when the whole Mauricio and um, Dorit cheating rumors came out, the biggest defense both of you had, and by both of you, I mean the couples, Mauricio and Kyle and Dorit and PK was, We're such good friends. We're such close friends. It's so disgusting. It's so ridiculous. Dorit was on Watch What Happens Live talking about my children call them Auntie Mo and Aunt Kyle, um, Uncle Mo and Auntie Kyle. So Dorit's children are calling you Aunt and Uncle, but you don't know them like that? You chose Dorit over your own sister, Kathy, and your own sister, Kim, on the show over and over again, but you don't know them like that? Kyle, your slip is showing, girl. Stop lying. Just come out and say, you know what? It's really 
And this is the thing. I would respect her so much more if she just came out and said, you know what? It's really hard for me to be close to Dorit because the entire world was speculating on whether or not she was having sex with my husband, who I am now estranged from and separated from. And there's all these other cheating allegations going on. So you know what? It's really hard for me to pretend like we have the same friendship. That I would understand. That I could empathize with. That I get. But don't come out here, Kyle, acting like you're Mariah Carey and you don't know her. Get off it. Get off it. Like, knock it off. Knock it off, Kyle. Knock it off. Your whole defense to the reason why it was so absurd that Mauricio and Dorit were having an affair was because of how close of a friend all of you were. And that you guys would travel together, you would go out all together, and that you guys were together all of the time. Girl, bye. You got in your feelings, which I completely understand. I'm not, I'm not judging you for this. If I was married and this was going on, if I was Kyle, I would feel some type of way. I totally get it. I, I just wish she would show her humanity. But the moment it's not convenient for her to be friends with you, Kyle has shown she will drop you. Look what she did to Lisa Vanderpump. Look what she did to her own sisters, both of them. Low key, she did it to um, the other women like Yolanda and um, Denise. She had a hand in all of that too. Lisa Rinna did, but Kyle was right there with them, right there with them, right? Another reason why I think that Kyle is trying to distance herself from Dorit without being honest is what happened in Aspen. Remember, because again, if you aren't Kyle's yes person, she will drop you. When Dorit said, um, when was it? It was, what were they beefing about? Remember in Aspen when Dorit and Kyle started beefing? Oh, when Dorit left Kyle's house in Aspen to um, stick up for Erica because Dorit was scared that Erica was about to start spilling her secrets. Remember when Erica lost her damn mind and was like, I don't give a damn about anybody but me. And um, they all were trying to be like, Erica, stop, stop. Erica was just like popping off. And Erica looked at Dorit and she goes, oh, she's like, you say one more thing to me. She's like, we all have secrets, right? And Dorit was like, understood the assignment. She shut all the way up and she basically helped Erica move all of her stuff out of Kyle's place into the hotel with Diana. Kyle felt very slighted by that. And remember, they were fighting in the Aspen kitchen. And then all of a sudden, Mauricio was like, ladies, ladies, you know, on behalf of me and PK, I want you guys to stop. And Dorit was like, oh, my God, you're right. <laughs> OK, I'll stop. OK, OK. Remember that? So there is there's that. And Kyle also came out and said that the fact that Dorit had the audacity, and I think, again, Dorit was correct. I can't believe I'm agreeing with Dorit, but I'm pretty much team Dorit on this one. During the last season finale, when Dorit said to Kyle, when they were talking, when it was Kathy and Kyle talking, and she said, oh, but like, she just wants to see if you could take a little bit of like responsibility or accountability for your action in it. And Kyle looked at her like, if you don't shut the F up. And she was like, I don't want you, your input right now. Like, I don't, I don't want you to like, in like to to say anything or whatever she said. And Dorit was like, okay. Kyle herself said either, um, she said it a couple episodes ago, episodes ago. She was like, yeah, things have been different with me and Dorit now. She was so supportive behind the scenes with me. But then at the reunion, she says that about Kathy. So because Dorit simply said, are you able to take some responsibility, some accountability for this situation? She went off. Very similar to how she treats Sutton. Just because Sutton and Kathy were still friends, she's basically had did a whole smear campaign against Sutton this season. Like if you go against Kyle, she will make herself the victim and then she will try to villainize you. And again, I'm not even a Ding Dong Dorit fan, but I'm team Dorit on this one because Kyle is dead wrong. Just come out and say it. Just say, you know what, Dorit? I don't rock with you anymore because of A, B, C, D, and E, and F. Because I'm on my petty. You didn't blindly support me. And the world thinks you smashed my husband. So I can't rock with you the way I used to rock with you. 
So just be honest. That's the real reason why you're not rocking with Dorit. It has nothing to do with Morgan Wade because you know how he has, you know, it has nothing to do with Morgan Wade. Um, It's because she's still close with Teddy. Kyle and Teddy are still, you know, thick as thieves. Teddy is still right there being her mouthpiece, being her little lap dog. Teddy is right there. So Morgan has, same with, um, what's her name? The, uh, Morally corrupt Faye Resnick. Kyle and Faye are fr- are super are still super close. So it's not that Kyle is turning on her fr- all of her friends for Morgan. Kyle is just saying, if you do not blindly show me loyalty at all times, then you're going to be the villain, and I'm going to be the victim, and I'm going to put because this is the thing. Kyle punishes her friends the same way she claims Kathy punishes her with jabs, with silence, with little digs. And that's why Dorit is losing her damn mind because she doesn't understand what's going on. Well, this is what's going on, Dorit. You want to know why your friendship is suffering with Kyle? Don't look at Morgan Wade. Look at everything I just said. That's why Kyle isn't messing with you anymore. It has nothing to do with Morgan Wade. And And again, I don't even think Morgan and Kyle are really like that. I think Morgan is fulfilling her contract and I think Kyle is just using Morgan as a distraction. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I really think is going on between Kyle and Dorit, you know? So honestly, Dorit, you might have dodged a bullet with this one. Look what she did to Lisa Vanderpump. Look what she's done to her own sisters. Look what she's doing to Sutton this entire season. You know, why is she attacking Sutton so much? Because she's pissed Sutton is still friends with Kathy and didn't just take her side. And that's why she has Anne-Marie going after her every other ep- every other scene. That's not right. So instead of having the tough conversation of, hey, Dury, I love you. You're my friend. But these things have happened. And for better or for not, they hurt my feelings. And that's why I'm struggling in our friendship. Kyle is trying to act like we're stupid and that we don't know that they used to be best friends. We we watch the show, Kyle. <laughs> you know, like we we watch we watch the show, Kyle. Like we know. We know. And your whole excuse was we're such good friends, there's no way they had an affair. But now you don't know her? Girl, stop. Girl, stop. But as always, I want to know what you guys think. What do you think the real reason is for Kyle and Dorit's fr- the demise of their friendship? Do you think it has anything to do with Morgan? Or do you think it has everything to do with what we just outlined? <laughs> everything. Put it down below. Before you do that, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to pick up your conspiracy theory t-shirt which is linked down below so with that let's move on to our next story so this is all about kyle and mauricio yet again and kyle slamming a-hole women who slide into mauricio umansky's dms and i have the clip of her talking about it so we will watch it now kyle Don't blame the women. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. If his DMs are open, is it a thought's fault for sliding in them? Is it? Let's find out. Here we go. So this is according to All About the Real Housewives. It says, Kyle Richards got very candid about the issues in her marriage to her husband, Mauricio Umansky, on the latest episode of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. On Wednesday's episode of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Kyle vented her frustrations over women who were constantly sliding into her husband's DMs on social media in an attempt to shoot their shot with the real estate mogul. Quote, Mo gets a lot of DMs from women. They don't care that he's married, and they're always the aggressor, she admitted. It just makes you realize there's a lot of effing a-holes out there. Yeah, and you're married to him. No, honestly... This might be an unpopular opinion, but like, I'm not really mad at Mo. I'm not. I'm not really that mad at Mo. I'm mad at Mo in different compartments. Like in his business, I'm mad at him when he is allegedly 
fraudulent when he, you know, defrauds his clients or real estate people and, and do shady deals and all of that stuff. I'm mad at that. Anytime you're stealing for allegedly stealing from someone or doing shady business deals and people have to sue you over and over and over again, and you're like not paying your agents the right commission, like all of that stuff, that bothers me. So Mo can, you know, whatever with the fraud stuff. But when it comes to his marriage with Kyle, the reason why I'm not mad at it is this. There comes a point where you have to admit that you created the monster. And what I mean by that is if you've allowed certain behavior, if you've co-signed certain behavior, if you've participated in certain behavior for decades upon decades, almost three decades because they've been married for 27, 28 years, then you are a part of the problem. And don't forget, there was also rumors that she was dipping it and doing it, that they both sort of had this open relationship type thing going on. So it's like, if you fed the monster and you were a monster, then why are you shocked that you are now in a monstrous situation? So don't blame the women sliding in his DMs. I don't co-sign that. I'm not saying that I agree. I don't think that any person should shoot their shot with someone who is in a monogamous relationship, marriage. But the question is, are they in a monogamous relationship, marriage? That's the whole thing. Is it actually monogamous? Has it ever been? That's the question, right? Okay. The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills OG made this surprising confession while playing a card game with her co-stars during Anne Marie Wiley's birthday celebration at a winery in Ojai, California. Kyle's response came from Sutton Strack, pulled a card that asked, is it appropriate for husbands when it comes to communicating with other women on social media? Murder, Kyle quipped. I've had a fight with Mo over that. I hate that. Liking people's photos, following people. You don't do that. Meanwhile, Kyle further opened up about Mauricio disrespecting her throughout their marriage during the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills after show. Kyle admits that Mauricio has disrespected her and their marriage by engaging with other women on social media. I think Instagram's literally the worst thing for relationships. I hate it. I think it's terrible, Kyle said on the after show. I have the clip so we can watch it in a second, guys, okay? She then laughed at the fact that she threw her husband under the bus on this week's Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, while Sutton and Garcelle said they read between the lines that Mauricio, quote, liked some photos he shouldn't have on social media. I wish I was the kind of person that could just laugh that type of thing off and be like, oh, look at you, but I don't. And not only does it feel disrespectful, but it is also like we're in the public eye and people can see who you follow and comment, Kyle admitted. Meanwhile, Kyle is out here for the last two to three years having a full-blown fake lesbian relationship with Morgan Wade, playing in our faces. But yet Mauricio liking some photos on Instagram is the end of a three-decade marriage. Kyle, bye. <laughs> but like, just stop it. Just stop it. And I'm not defending Mauricio. Trust me. I am not team Mauricio. I'm not saying what he's doing is correct at all. I'm just saying that there needs to be a level of self-awareness and accountability with this whole Kyle coming after Mauricio situation. Crystal Minkoff then chimed in and said, you know, you're really disrespecting your spouse in a public forum, and that's like even worse. That's even worse. On the other hand, Ding Dong Dorit added, Mo certainly knows that his wife would not tolerate him engaging with younger, attractive women on social media. There might be another couple that the wife would not mind at all. Are you talking about yourself, Dury? What's going on there? But let's hear it from the horse's mouth, okay? Let's hear what she had to say. Media comes up. I, I think Instagram is literally the worst thing for relationships. I hate it. I think it's terrible. <laughs> it's appropriate for husbands when it comes to communicating with other women on social media. I've had like a fight with Mo over that. I hate that. So. Yeah, yeah I like, that's cool. Liking people's photos. Yeah, no. Following people. It's too bad now I throw Mo under the bus. <laughs> it's, it's okay, honey. Like six months ago, it's like, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of annoying now. I'm like, yeah, you know what? And you know what else? 
honey. You Don't are, even have me listen, check those you DMs. You are very spicy on the first episode. Don't feel like I have to answer to anybody. Well, you don't. Don't become a rebellious person and do it out of rebellion. Do it because you want it. Listen, I am very f***ing clear right now. I'm not rebelling. I'm just really clear. That was like, oh. Yeah, because that's oh. right after one of those Instagram I, <laughs> situations. I was like, my girl <laughs> is pissed. And poor thing, he was just. <laughs> I think perhaps Mauricio has. Like some pictures. Yeah. You don't have to follow every single person and like all their oh. photos. But yeah, no, I don't like that at all. I wish that was the kind of person that could just laugh that type of thing off and be like, oh, look at you. But I don't. And not only is it, does it feel disrespectful, but it also is like we're in the public eye and people can see who you follow and comment. You know, you're really disrespecting your spouse in a public forum. And that's like even worse. <laughs> that's even worse. Mo certainly knows that his wife would not tolerate him engaging with younger, attractive women on social media. There might be another couple that the wife would not mind at all. If Marcel's wanted to look at beautiful women on Instagram, we don't have rules per se, but I also don't have trust issues. My husband is the one who, when we first started dating, we would go places and he would be like, Oh, um, honey, I slept with her before. So it's like, if you like somebody's picture and I know it's so-and-so that you used to date in 2003, I, why would I be upset about that? I already know that you used to date her. Me and ourselves are different though. We have the horrible conversations. We have the worst conversations. Like we talk about the worst stuff. Like people always want it like rainbows and butterflies and like, Husband, tell me, like, like eight and a half. Marcellus calls me eight and a half, and you're like, how does that make you feel? I'm like, great, it's a badge of honor. Like, I, and I, it's so funny, because I asked so many of my girlfriends that. I'm like, what would you do if your husband said you were eight and a half? Oh my God, I, I'd be so upset, and I'd divorce him. I'd be so, I'm like, why? Like, like, I'm not that woman. Like, I don't need, like, don't lie to me. Like, keep it real. That's, that's why I trust my You know, before we even get back to Kyle and, and, um, Mauricio, can we just collectively say how insufferable Anne Marie is? The woman is freaking insufferable. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. First of all, thou dost protest too much. If you really thought your husband calling you an eight and a half was, quote, a badge of honor, you delusional, low self esteem having person, um, you wouldn't have to get validation from your friends that it was okay. You wouldn't, she wouldn't, you wouldn't go around asking all your friends what they think. You would just be like, oh my gosh, I'm an eight and a half. Like, what? And she talks in circles. And also on the show, do you notice how I don't know if she has like a tick, like a ticky boom, like if something is actually wrong or if she does it on purpose, but she will literally say something and then be like, I never said that three seconds later. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know, like blink twice, Anna Marie, if you are like in a Stockholm Syndrome situation, like is something going on? Like, I don't know what is going on with her, but she talks in circles. She talks a lot. She talks a lot of nonsense. She lies and denies all of the time. Just like Crystal said, she gaslights you literally in the same exact conversation. Anna Marie, I'm going to need to have you get yourself checked out. And I'm not being disrespectful. I'm not being mean. I'm being serious. Like, I don't know what is going on with this woman's mind, her personality. I don't know if it's stress. I don't know if it's delusion, if it's her own coping skills. We all know the allegations against her husband. You know, if you're out and your husband's like, yeah, I slept with this woman. And then now he's liking her photos on Instagram. No woman is okay with that. I don't care how cool you want to act. I don't care how cool girl you want to pretend. You're out and your husband's like, yeah, I used to have sex with this woman. And then you see him engaging with her on Instagram. I don't care who you are. I don't care how solid your marriage is. I don't care how confident you are. You're going to feel some type of way. The way you react to how you feel will be based on, yes, your level of maturity, your level of security in your relationship, your level of confidence, your, your level of self-esteem, because having self-esteem and confidence doesn't mean that things don't get to you. It means the way in which you respond to the things that get to you is different. That's what emotional intelligence is. It's not that things don't get to you because you're still a human being. It's how do you navigate those moments that things that get to you.
Anne Marie sounds like a hot mess to me. And again, I don't care who you are. You're going to feel some type of way. If I'm out with my man and he's like, yeah, Candy, I used to smash that girl. We used to hook up. I've had sex with her. And then two days later, he's liking and, and engaging and sending fire emojis to this girl on Instagram. I'm going to that's I'm going to feel some type of way. I'm going to handle it in a mature way, but I'm going to feel some type of way. So Anne Marie miss us with this delusional thou dost protest too much. I think she's trying to conf this is what I actually think is going on with Anne Marie as I talk it out with you guys. <laughs> I think the person that Anne Marie is trying to convince that everything is okay in her marriage is herself. I think that's the person she's trying to convince. That's why she talks in circles. That's why she is seeking all this validation. That's why she's talking all this stuff. I think the one person she's trying to, to drink the Kool-Aid is herself. Because she knows on her gut intuition level, there's a fly in the milk and something ain't right. But I but I think for her, it's easier for her to live in la-la delusion land than to admit to herself, I, I have a lot of problems right now in my marriage. There's something really wrong here. And I, I really need to tackle what's going on. I don't think she wants to blow up her life. But... That's my assessment on her. You know what I'm saying? All right. So there's that. But put it down below. Let me know what you guys think. You know, who's, whose responsibility is it? Is it Mauricio's husband's responsibility to make sure that DM door is shut? Or is it the responsibility of everybody with an Instagram account not to slide into the DMs of a married man when the monogamy question is a little bit weird. I think it's both people's responsibility. I think it, I think let's just say hypothetically they are in a monogamous marriage. I think it's the spouse's responsibility to make it crystal clear that that door is shut. So people won't even try it because people try it with people. They think they can get away with, get away with it with, you know what I mean? Like there's certain men that women won't try it with. And there's certain women that men won't try it with because they already know what the deal is. And like, don't come over here messing up my relationship because we're good, you know? So there is that. But then I also think that people should respect people who are fronting or actually in however you want to take it with these people in monogamous relationships, like have more self-respect you know, have more dignity. There are millions and billions of people in this world. You don't have to try and take someone's man or take someone's girl or take someone's woman. You don't got to do all that. You know, the person that is right for you will be available in all aspects, emotionally and in relationship wise. They will be 100% available for you and you deserve that type of person. So I think I think everybody needs to kind of step up here on the responsibility level. But let me know what you guys think. Put it down below. But before you do that, be sure to like, subscribe, and share, and shop our Conspiracy Theory Tees, which are linked down below. So with that, let's move on to our next story. So this is all about PK and Dorit. <sighs> is their marriage doomed? Like, I have a question. Whose marriage is it more cringy to watch right now on the season of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? Is PK and Dorit the cringiest couple to watch or Kyle and Mauricio the cringiest couple to watch? Because they both are very cringy at this moment. So let's see what it has to say. Oh, no. The article I want to read is not coming up. Well, this is according to 2Fab. It says the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star, 56-year-old husband, says she's gotten, quote, more high maintenance over the years. Since her home invasion in 2021, her alleged home invasion, Dorit Kimsley has been open about the PTSD she has been continuing to suffer from. The longstanding effects of her horrific trauma have also been the root of some of her marital issues with husband Paul P.K. Kimsley. On Wednesday's episode of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, the couple spoke to a counselor where Dorit revealed how she felt P.K. was not present during the aftermath nor understood the severity of her PTSD. 
Quote, my biggest issue was that after the home invasion, I really needed PK around. And he was traveling all the time. He wasn't here for me, not physically and not emotionally, really. The passes, the patients, they're all now they're all now used up. It's time for him to show up. This is what I think really went went ha what happened between PK and Dorit. I think Dorit has gotten older. She has some kids. And I think that Dorit is kind of tired of the grift. What I mean by that is there's all the allegations of how PK is a gambler. He owed millions upon millions of dollars to all of these, you know, um, Las Vegas casinos. There's the allegations of his fraud and bankruptcy with the Barclays Bank back in London and, you know, uh, double crossing investors for both his businesses and her businesses. And there's all this stuff floating around that they're basically grifters and fraudsters and they're broke and all of this stuff. In my opinion, again, alleged, do I think their home robbery was legit? I don't. I think they did it as a an insurance scam to get the insurance money to clear PK's gambling debts that were not cleared by his bankruptcy. And I think that Dorit is pissed because she is like, I, you know, went along with this home, home invasion scheme. Because don't forget, their home, I don't know if it's that particular home, but they've had a couple of home invasions. This isn't the first time their home was invaded. They ha they've had a couple of break-ins. They also had another home insurance claim where she said that she left the water running and went to run errands and came home and the home was flooded. So that was another insurance claim for a lot of money. She also said she took out $10,000 to shop for, quote, Christmas presents. And she put the $10,000 in cash in her purse. She left it in her shopping cart. I don't know where Dorita is shopping where they have shopping carts. I don't know. Like, was she, like, where was she with the shopping cart? I'm confused. Was she at Target? I mean, what? Because where Dorit claims to shop, they don't have carts. You have an associate that that comes with you. You pick out what you want, and they have your dressing room ready for you. That's where that's what I that's the experience you usually have on like a rodeo drive. You don't have shopping carts, so I don't know what she's talking about. Again, I think this was a scheme and a scam. So they've had multiple quote issues with insurance scams and frauds and getting the money to clear their debt. And I think Dorit is in a place where she feels like I've done all of this for you to hold you down. I've been the scripter for you. And you're still out here scheming and scamming and not being present. You're in London. You're doing this. You're all over the place. I need you to step up or I want to trade you in for a younger, hotter, richer model. I think Dorit is on her. I look better now. I have fame now. I want to trade PKN. That's what I think the core issue is. I think Dorit is tired of scheming and scamming. And she wants to find a guy who really has some money. I don't think it has anything to do with this whole, quote, PTSD stuff. That's why he's like, I think your PTSD is obnoxious. Because at the end of the day, he knows she doesn't have PTSD because they planned the whole thing. I also think she's having some regret. Because like her or not, I do think Dorit is a good mother. And I do think she really loves her children. So I do think there's a part of her that is resentful towards him. That one day she's going to have to talk to her children about this alleged robbery who were present at the time this happened. So I do think she resents him for putting her and the children in that situation. And I do think she has guilt about putting her children in that situation. That's why I think she's having this whole conversation about um, I don't want them to go to, you know, school. I don't want them to go to public school. I want them homeschooled. There might be some psychological mother's guilt of the fact that she put her children in harm's way by going along with this bogus home invasion. Because I don't know what our alleged armed robbers comes into your house. You think that they're going to, you know, hurt you fatally hurt you while your children are sleeping and it's the end of you and your children and then they so politely and gently leave you your cell phone right by your gate for you to come to retrieve it after they robbed your house i don't know any burglars that do that 
If you know those type of burglars, let me know. I don't know any burglars that operate like that. One minute you think they're going to take your life and the next they're like, do you want me to bubble wrap your, your, your phone for you to protect it? Do you want do you want a protective, you know, screen for your for your phone? I want I just want to make sure your phone is in perfect condition so you can call 911 the moment I leave so they can come catch us. I don't know any burglars that is going to come in your house and steal your jewelry and your um bags and all your stuff, you know, in the in the thought of it that they're going to obviously like pawn it off or sell it, but yet they're going to give you a thousand dollar phone back because iphones are expensive you know they're from 500 to two grand so you're telling me the people who broke into your home for the explicit reason to rob you of your valuables is going to lean is going to conveniently leave you behind a valuable that you could use to call the police doesn't make any sense I think everything going on between Dorit and PK and this whole PTSD bull crap is Dorit having resentment towards him and guilt toward the situation she put her children in. That's what I think this whole thing is about. That's why I think the remember when it came out that they were separating, that he was living in, you know, the Beverly Hills Hilton Hotel or whatever hotel he was in, the Beverly Hilton or the Beverly Wilshire, one of the two. And that he was like, you know, they were basically living separate lives. She was doing her. You can clearly see that she does not trust him with the kids. She's like, you're not here. Where, like, where are the kids? I can't do this. You know, he's not around. She says she feels like a single parent. He was he was spotted not wearing his ring. There was rumors that when he got the DUI, there was a woman in the car with him. So there's cheating allegations. There was a cheating allegations with her and Mauricio. Again, that takes a toll because that's not just about Kyle. There's also PK. Granted, he might be a fraudster. He's still a human being. And like I said before, if it's going to hit Kyle some type of way, it's going to hit PK some type of way. No man wants the world thinking that his best friend is sleeping with his wife. Who wants, just like no woman like Kyle wants the world thinking that her best friend is sleeping with her husband. You know, PK also must have felt some type of way too. Again, I don't care how strong your friendship is or how strong your marriage is. That is going to take some type of toll. Doesn't mean you're going to get divorced. Doesn't mean it's true. Doesn't mean it's detrimental. But it does have an effect. The level of effect will obviously vary depending on the strength of your friendship, depending on the strength and security of your marriage. The level of effect will be different, but there will be an effect. That's just human nature. There's no getting around that. Right. So I do think that also played a toll in it. But her whole PTSD storyline is garbage and it is obnoxious. And I agree with PK on this. And she just needs to be honest. PK is broke. This isn't the lifestyle I signed up for. I re I, I resent him because this isn't the life I signed up for. I resent him that he made me do things I didn't want to do. I resent him that he put my children in harm's way. And that's why we're separated right now. Be honest. That's the problem with this show. These women actually are going through very real, relatable, based in the human experience things. We're talking about betrayal, not feeling appreciated. We're talking about resentment. We're talking about bitterness. We're talking about guilt. Those are all things that every human being can 100% identify with. But the reason why the show is lacking right now and we're not connecting to it is because they're not showing us any of the realness. They're showing us this fake weird stuff talking about people's esophaguses that has nothing to do with anything going on in the world. Why are we talking about Sutton's esophagus when PK and Dorit are separated and so are Kyle and Mauricio? But we're talking about Sutton's esophagus. Come on. Come on. And is nobody going to address the fact that, like, the real bisexual on the show is Garcelle? Like, shout out to Garcelle. Like, yes, yes. She was like, you know, I thought about it, you know? Like, why not? But no, well, but no we're focusing on Kyle and her fake relationship with Morgan Wade. That's why the show is failing is because they have juicy things going on, but they're faking the funk. And that's what we can't connect to.
Because this day and age, you can't get away with that stuff. Anyway, here we go. Most recently, PK organized a surprise at the Beverly Wilshire, Wilshire Hotel earlier this season for their anniversary. Dorit suffered from anxiety throughout the day as she was unaware of the surprise, nor who was looking after their children. The 47-year-old decided to air her grievances with the decision to surprise her at the romantic dinner. I tried to tell you, and you just had a reaction that was very defensive, she admitted before PK interrupted. Does PTSD require you to discuss it there? There isn't a freaking husband in the world that would have taken kindly to what she said when she said it after what I had just done. Do you understand? I felt a little bit of a F you, PK continued. Yeah, because Dorit is punishing you because the life you promised her when she met you. I'll make your dreams come true, baby. I got all this money, baby. We're going to see the world, baby, or Bubba, whatever, whatever they call themselves, you know, isn't what is she's actually living. Like, I don't think she thought she'd be living in a rental in Encino. I don't think she thought they'd be doing these insurance schemes and scams. You know, I don't think she thought that they would be doing bankruptcy. Maybe she did. Maybe she didn't. I don't know. But I feel like she felt a little bit of a bait and switch. Like you promised me this life. I thought you were this rich married businessman. And now I'm in this life with you. And it turns out, you know, we're not Bill Gates and Melinda Gates. Instead, we're Bonnie and Clyde out here scheming and scamming for every nickel and dime. I think she resents him. And I think there's a bitterness to her for where for where she's at. Because we don't forget, we also did the whole ep the whole episode um about the signs that they're broke, you know, her hair color and not putting their kids in private school. Cause I actually think, because this is the thing. I think that if they could afford private school, Dorit would put her children in private school. But the fact that they can't afford private school, instead of admitting that, Dorit is going to say, I want to homeschool the kids. Because, 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 no, no. On the show, PK said the kids should go to public school. And Dorit's like, no, 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 we have to, we have to homeschool them. I think if they could afford private school for their children, their children would be in private school. But because they can't, Dorit doesn't want to put her kids in public school. And that's why she wants to homeschool her kids. I don't think it's because she's so scared about her PTSD and all of that stuff. I think it's because she doesn't want to put her kids in public school. Number one, I think she's worried about how to look. And number two, she probably thinks they'll get a better education with homeschooling versus a public school if they can't afford to go to private school. That's the only thing that really makes sense. You know, and PK is just like, look, we can't afford private school, put them in public school, whatever. I don't want my kids coming out weird because we're homeschooling them. That's not my opinion. I'm saying this is what I think PK thinks. You know, whether you homeschool your children, I mean, the world we live in today, it might be the safest option. With You know what I mean? I don't want to get too deep into dark topics, but, you know, school, you know what that happened all the time. It's a scary place, bullying. So if she ha kind of had more of that mentality of why she wanted to homeschool the kids, I would buy that more than her whole PTSD from the break-ins. If you were like, I want to protect my kids because this world is crazy and you don't know what's going on in these classrooms and you don't know what people are walking in the school with, that I get. But the in home invasion, girl, bye. Girl, bye. Oh, so PK goes on to say, Dorit and the therapist attempted to explain the nature of PTSD to PK. However, the English businessman insisted that there were elements I understand and elements that I don't consider are PTSD. I consider they're more obnoxious, he added, noting how she's gotten more high maintenance over the years. And with that, I have to agree with PK on that one. I really, really have to do. I have to be, agree with PK on that one. I do think it's obnoxious. And I think she is bitter about the state of her life and resentful to him. I don't think it has anything to do with... PTSD from the alleged robbery. But I want to know what you guys think. Put it down below.
And before you do that, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to grab our conspiracy tees, which is linked down below. So with that, let's move on to our next story. So this one is all about a theory that Sutton Strack might be to blame for Lisa Renner, Renna's Real Housewives of Beverly Hills exit. We haven't talked about Lisa Renna in a while. So let's see what the word on the street is. And do you believe that Sutton Strack was actually the one behind her exit? So this is from Screen Rant. It says, Lisa Renna gave up her diamond ahead of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills season 13. And while signs have pointed to her feud with Kathy Hilton being the reason why, Sutton Strack may have triggered the exit. Lisa, who was introduced to the Real Housewives fans in 2014, has been involved in her fair share of arguments since the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills season five. From her infamous showdown with Kyle Richards' sister and Am Kim in Amsterdam to the public demise of her and Denise Richards' 20-year friendship, Lisa has never been one to keep her opinions quiet on one of the best reality TV shows. While Lisa is nowhere to be found on season 13, there's still curiosity regarding to why she left the show or why she was fired. Naturally, it didn't take long for Lisa to run into problems with her co-stars, especially Sutton on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills season 12. Lisa and Sutton, who attended the Elton John AIDS Foundation Gala in 2019, couldn't agree on how Lisa scored an invitation. Sutton claimed that she bought Lisa's table, which Lisa vehemently denied. Although Diana and Erica criticized Sutton's quest for the truth, Sutton made Garcelle Bouvet happy when she produced emails that confirmed she'd paid for Lisa's table. Months after Lisa and Sutton rehashed the event in front of Bravo's cameras, Lisa announced that The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Season 12 would be her last stint as a housewife. It's unclear why Lisa ultimately decided to part ways, but Sutton may have played an unintentional hand. Dun, 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 dun. While Lisa and Kathy's feud dominated headlines throughout 2022, it was actually Lisa and Sutton's public showdown that ultimately appeared to trigger Lisa's depart departure from the show. When Lisa's husband, Harry Hamlin, attended the Sundance Film Festival on January 21st, a source overheard him discussing Lisa's decision to leave, which he blamed on Sutton's insistence that she paid for their spot at, the Elton, at Elton John's event. Lisa might still be, sh be on the show had Sutton not said that, Harry reportedly said. He also claimed that IMDb gifted them tickets rather than Sutton, adding she might still be on the show, but the audience believed Sutton. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know, you guys. I don't know if I believe this. I think the real reason why Lisa left the show was because she made the show too dark and got called out and there was too many dark moving parts that happened and i think nbc decided to put her on pause maybe not a permanent fire but definitely a pause and because i think that number one they wanted to send a message to not just the beverly hills franchise but to all of the franchises that there needs to be a cap on this. I think the fact that Lisa was the one allegedly leaking all of the stories to the press, you know, they've come out and said for season 13, they're like, oh, do you notice how there's no spoilers? There are no more leaks, you know, up, coming up to this season. I think because Lisa went against Kathy Hilton, don't forget that, you know, she's a Hilton. Her daughter is married to a Rothschild. But behind that, is it not just her personal money, but you have to think about advertising money because you have to think about what does NBC care about? NBC is a corporation. What do they care about? They care about advertisers because advertisers is how they make money. So when Lisa went after Kathy Hilton, she didn't go after her personally. She went after the Hilton brand. The Hilton Hotels, the Hilton brand, those are franchises. They have brands upon brands upon brands. Just go to Hilton.com, look up all the companies and brands they have. What do brands do? They advertise and they sponsor. So if Lisa Renna wants to get up here and say that Kathy Hilton is a racist and a homophobe, not only is she threatening Kathy, she's threatening all of those brands. 
the Hilton brand that should, that they that they represent. Hilton and Highland, the real estate, the hotels, everything, right? They're not going to take too kindly to that. They're not. Because they are caring about public image and what that means for their bottom line when it comes to money. It's not a moral issue. It's a money issue. So I don't think it had anything to do with Sutton Strack. I think it had everything to do with money. I think the Hiltons put in a phone call and said, listen, if you don't put a pause on Lisa Renna, put a muzzle on your dog, then maybe we're not going to advertise. Maybe we're going to pull some of our advertising money. Because that could affect us. Because this is the thing. If people actually believe Lisa Renna, say her whole, her and Erica and Erica's publicist whole scheme worked. If people are saying that about Kathy Hilton, it's not that the powers that be care about Kathy Hilton. They care about the Hilton brand and how much that brand can make money. And when you're tarnished, particularly this day and age with homophobia and racism, that can tarnish their bottom line. That is what these people care about. That's what NBC Universal cares about. That's what the Hilton brands care about. You know, they don't care about being woke. They don't care about all this little intermingling. They don't care about personal grudges. They care about the bottom line. So I'm pretty sure someone at the top said, hmm, do we make more money off of Lisa Renna being on the Beverly Hills or do we make more money with all of the advertising from all of the brands under the Hilton umbrella? Because they have a lot of brands, the same way NBC Universal owns Peacock, owns NBC, owns E! News, owns Hey You, owns blah, 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 blah. The same way with Hilton. They have Hilton you know, blah, real estate and hotels and franchises and international places and all of that stuff. And all of their brands advertise where? On TV shows, streaming platforms like NBC. You always have to think bigger. That is why Lisa Renna got fired. Because she came, because she came for the queen and she missed. So when, and also when people are talking about, oh, people are scared of Kathy because they want to be invited to her parties. That's not it. People are scared of Kathy because Kathy holds access and influence. That's why people are scared of Kathy. And to be honest, that's just how it is. You know, it's just how it is. Certain people hold the keys. If you don't like it, get yourself a set of keys. You know, <laughs> get yourself your own set of keys. So that's why I think Lisa Renna was fired. I don't think it had anything to do with Sutton. I don't think it had anything to do with Elton John tickets. I don't think it had anything to do with that. I think it was the fact that Lisa came for the wrong one. Because she's done this systematically to so many people. The whole faux fo fo fox hive, even, you know, Kyle included. Kyle and Rena going after Denise, going after Yolanda, going after Kim, going after Lisa Vanderpump. But this was the first time they went after someone whose pockets directly affect the pockets of the powers that be. The executives, the corporation. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's why, in my humble opinion, Lisa Renna got fired. Another reason why I think this is this. It also came out that Lisa Renna sent Kathy Hilton a bouquet of flowers and a whole apology letter, and they talked on the phone for a good 20 to 30 minutes. Because Lisa was like, I don't effed up. I need to kiss the ring. I missed my shot and I want to get back in the good graces because she knows it takes one phone call from Kathy for her to be back, for her to be back on the good graces. That to me says the reason why she got fired was because she came for Kathy, not because of Sutton and some stupid Elton John tickets. That doesn't make any sense to me. Lisa Renna, who's done everything under the sun is going to leave the biggest paycheck she's ever seen in her life because Sutton Strack said that she paid for Elton John tickets? Does that make sense to you? Does it make sense that Lisa Renna would leave the biggest 
paycheck in her family, in her ho- in her ho- household. No shade to Harry Hamlin, but I don't think he was making as much money as Lisa was making on the real, on the on the Housewives. You know, that's why we had the actor strike because people think just because you see somebody on TV, they must be making all this money. That's not true. A lot of actors you see are not super rich or wealthy. You have your Hollywood elites who are making millions, but your average actor, your um, character actor, your quote working actor, even Viola Davis was talking about how much she was struggling and she is an EGOT, you know? And she was talking about, you know, how much she wasn't making, you know? Um, So just because you see people on TV and that's why also these reality stars, a lot of them turn out not to have any money. So just because you see someone on television doesn't mean they're making money, even if they're in movies, even if they're in TV shows. There was a producer that came out. They said that they were an executive producer on a television show on Amazon Prime, and they were still driving for Lyft and Uber because they weren't making enough money as a producer on the show to make ends meet. So that's why you had the writers strike. That's why you had the actors strike. Because you had the executives at the top who aren't the creatives. They're not, they're not giving their blood, sweat, and tears. They're not creating the content that we're enjoying. But they are the ones who are making all the money. They literally said, let them strike. When they start losing their apartments, they'll go back to work. While they went off on some like millionaire, billionaire island laughing it off. It's the executives and then a core group of like, you know, A-list celebrities who are making millions up. Taraji, Taraji P. Henson. The whole thing with her going against Oprah and the color purple, purple and that pay disparity. I'm not going to talk too much about this on my channel because it can get to a very dark place and I'm not trying to go there. But what I'm trying to just say is open your eyes and really think about this stuff. You know, really look at what's going on. Just because these people are on TV doesn't mean they're making a lot of money. And I don't think someone like Lisa Renna, and I don't mean this against her. I mean this in like a normal way. Any person who has a family or just has themselves, just their own, you know, even if you're even if you're single, not married, no kids, you still need to eat. You still need a roof over your head. You still need clothes. You still need a car. You still need gas in your tank. You still need groceries. Any person whose number one source of income and they don't have many other sources of income, isn't just going to walk away from that because somebody said, oh my God, you! I paid for a table at a gala for you. I'm not going to walk away from the biggest paycheck that's keeping a roof over my head and food in my table and gas in my car on this like a basic level. So I don't believe this. I don't think it has anything to do with Sutton Strack. I don't know who planted this story. I don't know what is going on. But I don't believe it. But I like to bring us, you know, um, different stories from different publications to dissect it and to think, do we think this is true? Does this actually make sense? Because it's also it's also another good exercise in using our discernment. Just because something is published doesn't make it true. So we have to really think about who's pushing certain narratives, who's trying to do damage control. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if, and this might surprise you, if Kathy Hilton's team put out an uh, article like this because it takes the heat off of her. Oh, it was Sutton. It wasn't me and my (laughs) powers and influence that did this. I'm just over here hunky-dory. You know, you never know. You never know. But I like to bring these type of articles so that way the next time you're reading an article, from any source, whether it's the New York Times or whether it's reality blurb, use your common sense and think, does this make any sense? Who benefits? Who doesn't benefit? What narrative does this benefit? Always, yes, consider the source, but use your own discernment all the time. You know what I mean? Just because you see it doesn't make it true. And they always tell us, what did, what did T Evil T say? Fake news? He wasn't lying about that. There's a lot of fake news out there. So there's that. But put it down below. Let me know what you guys think. What do you think the real reason Lisa Brenna left or was fired from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? And who do you think planted this story? Because I also think it's bizarre 
and this is a very recent article. I didn't I didn't have to go back for this. You know, this is a very recent article. This was um, updated on January 4th. Why are they updating, you know, stuff about Lisa Renna on January 4th when she's been gone the whole time? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, put it down below. And before you do that, be sure to like, subscribe, and share, and shop our Conspiracy Theory Tees, which is linked down below. So with that, let's move on to our next story. Bad news for Miss Erica Jane. Apparently, she could lose big now that her, I'm not even going to say a estranged husband. I'm just going to say her husband, Thomas Girardi, has been found competent to stand trial. This is not looking good for her. Keep in mind, they are still legally married. So this is according to The Sun. It's an exclusive. It says, trial and tribulations. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Erica Jane could lose almost a million dollars after judge rules Tom, Gir Tom Girardi is competent to stand trial. Erica filed for bank for divorce back in 2020, but it has stalled amid Girardi's bankruptcy and criminal case. The disgraced former lawyer, 84, was found competent to stand trial in the, in the criminal case earlier this month. He pleaded not guilty last year to wire fraud on charges that he embezzled $15 million from clients. Side note, that number allegedly is way, way higher. But a lot of times in these cases, particularly white collar crimes, they won't get you on every little thing. They will get you on what they know that they can 100% nail you with. Because when the federal government comes for you, when you're at this type of level, they don't play. So they keep their cases tight. So yes, they may know you did more, you did this, but they are going to nail you on what they know they can like crucify you with. So they're saying 15 million, but we all know it is way more than that over the decades and decades and decades. And then also it gets to a point where if they go, go for every single thing that can sort of muddy it, if it gets overwhelming and too much. And then it also becomes moot. You know, you can't do, it's like when somebody gets like th three life sentences, it feels good for the victims or the victim's family to be like, I got justice for my particular thing, but it's a moot point because a person only has one life cycle. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's saying 15 million, but we know it's way more. Okay including a burn victim and a couple whose child was injured in a car crash. Girardi, who filed for bankruptcy in 2021, has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, but was accused by prosecutors of exaggerating his symptoms to try and avoid prosecution. Erica, 52, has always denied any knowledge of her estranged husband's possible crimes, but the criminal case could affect her bank account, according to an expert. She filed for divorce back in November of 2020, but there has barely been any movement in the case. Attorney Ronald Richards, who previously, who was previously Girardi Keese's special counsel against Erica, believes she could lose close to a million if he is convicted, along with any exempt property payouts from the bankruptcy estate. Her divorce has been sitting on ice since 2021, he said. They're doing nothing in that case. She is set to get half of whatever remains after the bankruptcy case. Some things are exempt and there are community assets. But if he's convicted, a restitution order could attack whatever is left and she could lose out, as well as be on the hook for lifetime alimony payments. I don't know what they mean by alimony payments. I thought alimony was about marriage and divorce. If he's convicted... Why would she have to pay him alimony? I don't know. Any lawyers or any people who understand that, put it down in the chat box. But I do understand the other part. So essentially, because they're still legally married, if he's convicted, that means he there will be restitution in the in the outcome, right? He's going to have to either do jail time since it's criminal, and he's going to have to pay people back. Restitution. So they're basically saying anything that comes out of that bankruptcy would not go to Erica Jane, which is what she's holding out for, which is also why she's been so defiant. I mean, it's literally, it's just, it's greed. 
it's greed and it's to toxic selfishness. Because to be honest with you, at this point, Erica Jane doesn't need Tom Girardi's blood money. She's on the show. She has residencies. She has whatever the heck else she's doing ex extensions. She doesn't need this blood money. The sickening part is how much she's still trying to hold on to the victim's money. And for what, Erica? For what? Your life is already more lavish and luxurious and wealthy than 98% of the rest of the world. So what exactly are you still holding on to at this point? At this point, it's just evil. It's just evil. You have enough. Not that I, I don't personally think that people should, when you're actually doing something moral, I don't think you should put a cap on your abundance. I'm not a person like, oh, you have enough, you know, just for a normal life, just stop. No, I'm not like that. If you are getting your, if you're getting your money morally, if you are getting your abundance morally without, without hurting anybody, sky's the limit, go beyond the sky. Do you knock yourself out? I'm not that type of person. When I say you have enough is, you have enough, Erica. You don't need to continue to victimize the victims and try to get these people's money. That's what I mean by you have enough. You're driving, you know, fancy cars. You have designer clothes, designer jewelry. You have your own spinoff with Bravo. You're still on this show making however much money you're making every single episode. You have enough. You live in a multi-million dollar um, mansion in West West Hollywood, Beverly Hills adjacent. You have enough. The house she's filming in is a multi-million dollar house. She wants to act like, oh my God, we downsized from Pasadena. You live in a multi-million dollar house. I'm, you're fine. You're fine, Erica. You still have artwork and everything else. That is what is sickening. She literally just wants the victim's money out of ego and to win. That's the sickest part. I hope she goes to jail. I really do. Richards believes there could be plenty left after the bankruptcy case and exempt property payouts. However, the law requires restitution fines in every criminal case in which an offender is convicted of a crime. Court records seen by the U.S. Sun show there have been no new filings in the divorce case since 2021. I'm going to tell you why. The reason why there has been no new filings on the divorce case since 2021 is this. The only reason why she filed for divorce in the first place was it was a part of their contingency plan. If things hit the fan, we are going to pretend like we're getting divorced to shield you from any guilt or liability or people coming after you. You can pretend to be the, you know, destitute, forlorn, scorned wife. You had no idea. You're just as shocked as everybody, blah, 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 blah. They did that in an attempt to give her cover. Obviously, nobody bought that. The reason why there's been no movement between 2021 and 2024 is because they were waiting well, I think they thought that their whole scheme of Tom Girardi having dementia and Alzheimer's, they'll just let him go to a memory home and live out his days and they wouldn't actually come after him and she would still be legally married to him. So then she would still have the right to his money and assets if the government didn't proceed with charges. So that's why over the last three years, there's been no movement because they've been basically playing chicken with the federal government. Because if the feds did not indict him, then she would still have access to all of his stuff as the spouse. So once he did unfortunately pass away, because even though he's a criminal, I don't wish death on anybody. I hope he lives a long life just in jail as a criminal. So whenever that would happen, she would still have claim to all of that stuff. But... This is why I say playing chicken. The fact that they are still legally married and now he has not only been indicted, but he's also been now saying he's competent to stand trial. If he is convicted, his debts become her debts. And that's what they're talking about restitution. So that restitution is going to come out of all, any money that he has. Anything he has left over, they're going to come in, they're going to scoop it up 
to pay back the victims, to make them whole. And probably to, to pay the federal government to all the fines and the fees and everything, right? So that's why they haven't gotten legally divorced is because they were going to wait it out and see what the federal government did. Not because they're actually getting divorced or they're estranged. Like, stop playing in our faces. Because again, Erica, she told us she talks to Tom every day. She said that he was smart as a whip. She bought a big old handle of vodka to go cry their sorrows together when he was indicted. I don't know what memory facility allows you to bring in vodka, but she was allowed to bring in vodka when he got indicted. So, miss me with that. Anyway, the bankruptcy case is still going on as it was reported former clients, vendors, and lenders had nearly $480 million in claims against Girardi's estate. That makes more sense. That is almost half a billion dollars. That's why I said, yeah, they're going against him for $15 million, but we know it's a lot more. He was running a half billion dollar Ponzi scheme because he was running it decade upon decade upon decade. He's 84 and literally only up until about four years ago, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2021, everything hit the fan. He was still running it. So at 80 years old, he was still running the Ponzi scheme. Sick, sick. In November of 2023, it was reported bankruptcy trustee Alyssa Miller had paid $27.2 million, mostly to secured creditors. There are still allegedly around $322 million in unsecured creditors. In court documents, Miller wrote, collections will likely continue for many years. Uh, you think? Richards believes Erica initially thought there would be money in the divorce, but as things unraveled, it was clear it was going to be months or even years before she saw a dime. The lawyer believes the Bravo star is not happy her ex has been found competent to stand trial with a status conference set for Wednesday, January 10th. Of course she's not happy because the more he goes down, the more he, there's leverage to pull her to pull her down with him. I still think they're going to get her for something. I just don't think the federal government is going to let this woman thumb her nose to them and pat her puss at them and nothing happened to her. It's just been too much. It's been too much. If, if we have Jen Shaw in federal prison, Elizabeth Holmes, Teresa, I don't care if anyone's like, Erica didn't do anything. Yeah, she did. She knew and she benefited from it. And now she's trying to game the system to keep those people's money. She needs to go to jail too, in my personal opinion. He is facing multiple charges, each with a potential prison sentence of up to 20 years. Girardi's net worth. The U.S. son has reached out to Erica's lawyer for comment, but did not hear back. Richards believes despite the disbarred lawyer's age and ailing health, he will still serve time if found guilty. Yeah, he will. Yeah, he will. He definitely will. If I mean, you know, if he makes it that long. Again, I'm not wishing any ill towards him physically. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But, you know, he's 84 and the stress of everything. So I'm not wishing that type of ill. But if he is found guilty, I do think they're going to make him go to jail as they should. Um, asked how Girardi's alleged victims have responded to judge's decision, he said, they feel great as there is justice on the horizon. The conservatorship and the bankruptcy stopped a lot, but it didn't work for the federal criminal court. Richards believes he'll likely go to jail for at least a couple of years and end up on a medical ward for seniors. Yeah. Gerard's net worth is unknown amid the bankruptcy case, but court documents show he provided a financial statement back on March 10, 2020 to one or more lenders. He claimed his estate included real estate properties worth $89 million, cash on hand of $116 million, Securities totaling $44 million and household items, including jewelry, worth $12 million, resulting in the sum of around $261 million. However, it was alleged in court filings that many of the items listed could not be found, and it was alleged he may have transferred, removed, destroyed, mutilated, or concealed property. So basically, he's hiding the money. Erica helped, in my opinion, and his little goons helped too. Like you see Erica in Vegas with these like really old men and they're like, who's Erica's new sugar daddy and who's this person? I, uh -uh. I don't think that those are her quote sugar daddies in the way we think of it. I don't think that these are her new boyfriends. I think that these are Tom Girardi's thug friends because Tom Girardi is a thug. 
there is no difference between Tom and the mafia and gang and gangsters. There's there's no difference. Tom Thomas Girardi is a thug. He stole from people. He ran uh, organized crime, and he threatened people if they dared to defy him. He's a thug. So the people that you see Erica with are his little cronies, people that he has set into place to help her and to and to funnel her money. The same that the old guy in Vegas, um, Richard Wilkes, I think his name was, or whatever his name was, the guy with the Wells Fargo account in Florida. These aren't her sugar daddies. I don't think she's having, I don't think Erica is sleeping with old men. I think she's doing like the young guys and all that stuff. We, and, you know, she's been linked to Scooter Brown and Army Hammer. And I think she's around those types of guys. I think she's dipping into it with guys in their like 30s or 40s. I think the older men she's with are his cronies, men that they've done dirt biz with and fraud with. And he set up accounts for them to help her. That's what I think. I don't think it's her sh new sugar daddies. I don't think that. Um, because it doesn't make any sense. All right, here we go. Re uh, if found guilty, ask how Girardi's alleged victims have responded to the judge's decision. They said they felt great. Okay, we covered that part. All right. All right, let's see. However, it was alleged, that's right, in a separate case in Chicago, Girardi is facing federal wire fraud charges after being accused of stealing about $3 million from family members of the victims of a 2018 Lion Air crash. That case has been in limbo, but is expected to follow the competency decision in California. So basically, that means since the um, powers that be in California said he's competent, the people in Chicago are like, well, you know, California said he's competent, will say he's competent too. We don't need to put him through an additional test. We will just say he's competent as well, which makes sense. Um, also, Diana Jenkins, where is the $100,000 for the airline victims? Didn't you pledge $100,000? What happened to that? Oh, that's right. You didn't. You set up your own private uh, non-for-profit asking for donations. Basically what Diana Jenkins did, you guys remember? She basically set up her private, a private GoFundMe. Does not call it GoFundMe. She just named it herself and was like, if everybody pays up to $100,000, I'll give the proceeds to the victims. Girl, bye. What happened to that? We'll wait. New civil case. Ooh. Meanwhile, although Erica has not been charged with any crime and was dismissed from a civil lawsuit in January of 2022, she is still under fire for her alleged involvement. Involvement. She is being sued by costume designer Christopher Pasala in a lawsuit filed in the U.S. District Court of the Central District of California on August 29th, 2023. Pasala alleges that the estranged pair weaponized the Secret Service to maliciously prosecute him in 2017 to acquire nearly $800,000 to acquire a nearly $800,000 refund from American Express. Erica has yet to formally answer the lawsuit, but her lawyer, Evan C. Borges, told U.S. Weekly in a statement that the allegations come at a questionable time as she was about to launch her week songs Vegas residency, Bet It On Blonde. It's not questionable, it's strategic. Why are they getting, like, this, I don't understand. This is what I mean. Why is Erica Jane getting her own residency in Vegas when she can't sing and she can't dance and she's still trying to get victims' money? It's evil. It seems calculated that the plaintiff timed this lawsuit to coincide with Erica's Las Vegas residency opening. It's not calculated. It's strategic. I would have done the same thing if I was him. Pla plaintiff's claims against Erica are without merit. That's what they always say. There's no merit. Yeah, right. Anyway, independent federal prosecutors at the U.S. Attorney's Office made the decision to charge plaintiffs with crimes, with crimes no one else. The notion that Erica controlled the U.S. government or, for that matter, a Fortune 100 company such as American Express is fantasy. That's not fantasy. That's not fantasy. That guy, the Secret Service guy, got in trouble because it wasn't that he was doing Erica a favor. He was doing Tom Girardi a favor. They had this whole scheme going on. We talked about it. And that guy got in trouble. And that's another reason why this situation with Erica and Tom Girardi got so big is because, yes, Tom had corrupted so many people to run a half-billion-dollar Ponzi scheme in the state of California 
for about four decades. However, other entities were pissed that they that he left so much egg on their face. Like the Secret Service were pissed. The federal government is pissed. Um, who else got involved? Other, you know, other agencies. That's the thing. It made them look stupid. It made them look compromised. And yes, corruption exists. Obviously, that's why we have what's going on with, with Thomas Girardi. But good people also exist too. And particularly in these types of entities, whether it's like the military, the police, the law, you know, the federal government, their persona, their public facing persona, their reputation is everything. And when someone makes it looks like they got the dime on them, they don't take kindly to that. They don't. So that's another big reason why they're going after him so hard is because it made them look complicit. It made them look stupid. It made them look whack. You know what I'm saying? And they don't like that. You know, the easiest way to piss people off, especially people in the military or police officers or judges or anybody in that is to defy their authority. And a lot of what Tom did, did that in his little cronies and they got pissed off. This Secret Service guy, when there be the, the lawsuit that Erica is in, he got in a lot of trouble. Because he, allegedly, I will say allegedly, he did use his position of authority um, to intimidate these people because Tom Girardi allegedly then gave him a big kickback. So to say this is a fantasy, no, lawyer, you're trying to act like this stuff doesn't happen all day, but it does. Corruption across the board happens all the time. Boy, bye. Again, I'll say alleged, but all you guys have to do is Google it. I even did a story on it, but you Google it and all the information comes up. So you guys can, you know, look at it and research it for yourself. Yikes. <sighs> but I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think about this? Um, do you think Erica will ever be held accountable? Do you think the feds will ever come after her for something? It may not be the biggest thing, whether it's wire fraud or tax evasion, or do you think they're just going to let her get off scot-free and just facing these civil lawsuits? You know, what do you guys think? And what do you think about Tom Girardi? He's, you know, on the, he's been said to be competent. He's going to have to stand trial and answer for his alleged crimes. What do you think is going to happen to him in the whole situation? And what do you think it means for Erica that they're still legally married? So if he is convicted, anything that he owes is now her debt. I personally think turnabout's fair play. She took all of the gifts while married that he stole from people. She took all of that. So if she wanted to take the good, then sweetheart, you got to take the bad. You got to take the bad. So, oh, and Janet said Kyle and Mauricio getting off scot-free was complete crooked courts. Janet, listen, I did a whole, and I'll let you guys know what we're talking about. I did a whole deep dive when Mauricio, Mauricio Umansky and the agency and his partner were being sued for about $32 million because they basically did a really shady bait and switch with one of their clients. All of a sudden, the case was dropped, dismissed. <laughs> I don't even want to get too much into it, but it was basically the, quote, silent partners, investors that Mauricio used in this, I'll, again, I'll say alleged, alleged fraud scheme, fraud scheme. The moment their names were about to be revealed and made public, all of a sudden, the case was dismissed. Mind you, this was a federal court case that had been going on for four years. All of a sudden, it was like, oh, there's no merit to this case. Dismiss it. In my opinion, in my conspiracy theory mind, I think that the names of the silent investors in that were allegedly evolved in Mauricio's fraud scheme were very powerful, probably dangerous people. And when their identity was threatened to be exposed, they probably made a phone call. And that's what made the case go away. I think that if they had not 
been on the brink of being exposed, they would have let it, they would have let it continue because they wouldn't want to show their hand. But because they were about to be exposed, their identities, they called in a favor or they called in what they had to call in to get the case dismissed. I personally do not believe for one second that Mauricio and his and his again cronies were innocent. I think they did do the fraud. I think they did do the scheme. I do, I, in my opinion, again, this is my opinion. This is for entertainment. This is alleged. This is my opinion. I think they did everything that they were accused of. But I think when the powerful people that they were working for, <laughs> because again, I don't think Mauricio was the biggest fish in this situation. When their identity was threatened to be exposed, all of a sudden the case went away. I did a deep dive on it. Go back and watch it. It's just a little too convenient. It's just a little, it's a little, it's a little too convenient. I don't know why the federal court would continue a case for four years or so that it, quote, had no merit. Mm -mm. <sighs> so there is that. There is that. There is that. But I want to know what you guys think. Put it down below. Before I do that, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And as always, check out our conspiracy theory tees. They are linked down below in the show notes. Dun, 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 dun. So let's see. Let's do let's do one more story. I had a couple more, but we'll do this one. So this is 10 Signs, The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Season 13 will be the last. Let's see. Is this the end of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills era as we know it? Okay. Now, again, I like to share stuff that we can think about. I don't agree with all of these 10 signs, but we're going to break them down. And I want to know which signs do you agree with which size, what signs do you not agree with, okay? Because I don't agree with all of these 10, but we're going to break them down. All right, so here we go. So this is according to Screen Rant. There are a few reasons why The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills could end after season 13. The reality TV series has been one of Bravo's biggest franchises over the last decade. It premiered in 2010 and has come a long way since then. The spinoff's newest season came out of October 2023, featuring some old cast members and many newcomers. The latest names included proud mommy Sutton Strack, entrepreneur C Crystal Kong Minkoff, and Kyle Richards' neighbor Anne-Marie Wiley. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Season 13 focused on the usual drama, with the biggest plot being Kyle's relationship. The newest season featured some notable moments. In episode one, viewers got a brief glimpse of for a, a former cast member Lisa Rinna's resignation letter. She thanked the network for eight years and revealed she wouldn't renew her contract or return for the series anymore. Erica Girardi also shut down some rumors about her weight loss. She claimed her transformation was thanks to good hormones and not Ozempic. The premiere episode also showed Kyle and her husband, Mauricio Umansky, navigating their separate lives. Watching the once happily married couple fall apart was uncomfortable for many viewers. Let's first break down that. Number one, I don't believe that that was Lisa Rinna's resignation letter. I think she got fired. Number two, Erica Jane is clearly on Ozempic or some type of peptide. I didn't think that hormones did that. And Kyle and Mauricio, yeah, they're super cringe. We all know that. All right. Now let's move on to number 10. The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills viewership has declined. The show is failing to keep viewers' attention for long. Despite a successful decade-long run, season 13 may be the last time viewers see The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. One reason is the show's viewership, which highlights The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills has become a shadow of its former self. During season two, the series hit over 2 million viewers in the second demographic. In comparison, Season 13 was close to the 1 million mark, with the age ranging from 18 to 49 across multiple platforms. The network also put out delayed viewership numbers, sharing the data of the first three days, probably because the live viewership numbers weren't good. Well, a couple of things with that. Number one, number one, I agree the viewership is kind of down. Um, I think that this season 
the problem with the season is nobody's happy. We're watching a bunch of miserable women. And I really mean that. Nobody's happy. That's the problem. There's no joy. There's no spark. There's no fun. There's no kiki. I love Sutton, but she's miserable. I love Garcelle, but she's miserable. I love Kyle. Well, I don't know if I love Kyle, but but Kyle's miserable. Dorit is miserable. Crystal has no reason to be miserable, but she is. Anne Marie is insufferable. Erica, miserable. Like what woman on the show? And I really mean this. Are you like, wow, she seems really happy and fulfilled and complete. And I just love watching her because she's a vibe. You know, I love Garcelle, love her. And I love Sutton too. But like I said before, they don't seem happy on like an energetic level. I'm, I'm talking about like seriousness, not like, oh girl. I mean like on a serious level, they don't seem happy. And I think that's what's really been making this season th that weird energy to it. It's like a weird energy where none of these women are really happy. And even Crystal, who should be happy, seems like she has a great marriage. There's even a low vibe to her. Or it's just like, what's wrong, Crystal? <laughs> like, what? Aren't, shouldn't you be happy too? So I think there's a bit of that going on. And then I don't know how they're doing viewership, but season two, there wasn't streaming. There wasn't online in season two. So I don't know if they're only doing like Bravo network numbers. To me, I would need to see, well, what are the Peacock numbers? You know, what are the app numbers? What are the streaming numbers? Because the way we view and consume content today versus 11 years ago is very, very different. So I don't know how they're measuring this, but I do bet viewership it probably is down. So that could definitely be a reason. Okay. Number nine. Many iconic cast members have left the show. Viewers don't get to watch familiar faces anymore. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills may not be as interesting as it used to be due to all the cast exits. When the show premiered in 2010, fans got involved in stories of Taylor Armstrong, Camille Grammer, Adrienne Maloof, Kim Richards, Kyle, Lisa, Lisa Vanderpump, and many more. Fast forward to season 13, and nearly 90% of the original cast has left the show, with only Kyle remaining. Some other iconic cast members who become famous in the later seasons, like Eileen Davidson and Lisa, have also said goodbye, leaving viewers with only new cast members. This is the thing. I don't think it's so much that familiar faces that left the show. I think it's the way in which they left the show. Left very sour tastes in our mouth. How What they did to Lisa Vanderpump was disgusting. We don't got to get into the details. We all know. Um. Camille Grammer leaving. Camille was great TV. The fact that I I think it was in my opinion, I think Kyle got her fired off the show because Kyle, although she isn't a technical producer, she is definitely a um, performative producer. She's really close with the other producers on the show. She, she was really in with Alex Baskin and some other people. Camille and Kyle were beefing. And you normally, when you beef with Kyle, you, unless you have your own pull in a very, very strong way, she kind of has a way of getting you out. She did it with Carlton. She did it with Camille. Um, Adrienne Maloof left after Brandy outed the fact that she was, that she uh, used surrog surrogacy to have her children and her children didn't even know. That left a bad taste. So it's not that they're leaving. It's the way in which Kim Richards, right? All of that. And I think that if they added new people who made more sense and didn't keep people on too long, i.e. the faux Fox five, then that would be different. But I don't think it's necessarily that the OGs have left. I think it's why they left, left a sour taste and who they were replaced with. Wasn't that great. Like Teddy was a flop. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. So that's what I really think is going on here. But I want to know what you guys think. Put it down below. All right. Number eight, Kyle Rich Richards may want to quit to focus on her future. Kyle may need to take time off to bring order to her chaotic life. 
Another reason why Real Housewives of Beverly Hills may end is Kyle's potential exit. She may want to take time off to focus on her life and future. Over the months, she has faced many challenges in her personal life. She has dealt with divorce rumors about her husband Mauricio, new relationship rumors with Morgan Wade, and many more. Kyle may need time to focus on herself and her goals. After season 13, she may want to work on her relationship with Mauricio or finally decide to move on for a better future with someone else. Now, I don't think this is a reason for the show to end. I think this is a reason for the show to get better. I think Kyle's time has been up. And what we see now of her on the show is a very good example of what happens when a person's time on a show is expired and it starts to stink. I think there should be shelf lives for housewives. There just comes a point in time in anybody's natural life cycle where they're not having storylines. They're not having authentic drama. They're not having things that are enjoyable to watch. I think Kyle, for the majority of the time she's been on the show, has deflected and used other people's storylines and issues as a to, and piggy packed off of them being the potster, being the producer plant on the show. And now that she actually has to focus on her own life, it's a complete, you know, crap show. It's a complete mess. I think Kyle should have left this show maybe one or two seasons ago. It's always better to leave on a high than a low. But I think Kyle leaving the show would help to save it rather than help to sink it. Okay. And that will lead you to what I feel about number seven. Because remember, we're going through the article, but we're going to, I want you guys to dissect which, what do you agree with and what you don't agree with. I don't agree with this one either. This one says, new cast members aren't enough to carry the show in Kyle's absence. New stars' lives may not be alone to hook the audience. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills has always been star-studded, with wealthy families like the Richards and Vanderpump being the show's highlight. However, things have changed considerably after all the cast members dropped out of the franchise and moved on. Now, the series relies upon Kyle's, whose exit could mean the end of the show. If Kyle leaves Beverly Hills, the new names like Crystal, Garcelle, Satin, Dorit, and Erica aren't enough to carry the show any further. Bravo will have to go back to get some of the originals if they want to continue the series. I don't agree with that. I don't think that if Kyle left the show, the other woman wouldn't be interesting enough to carry it. I don't think that's true at all. I don't think we even need to go back and get old faces. I think we need to get some new faces. I think that's been a big problem with the franchises is that they try to go back and recycle the old when what we need is new. And I don't think that Kyle leaving would be a detriment to the show. I think it would actually help. I think it would lighten the show. And to be honest with you, this season, Garcelle has really become the anchor of the show. I think Sutton is the MVP. I think Sutton's that girl of the show. But I think Garcelle is the anchor. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Sutton's the MVP because... She's coming, she's stirring the pot, she's funny, she has the one-liners, she's going after Kyle, she's giving it, she has, she's quirky. That's what I mean by she's the MVP. She's fun to watch, we, we like her, you know? Um, what I mean Garcelle is the anchor is this. You could tell that they were making Garcelle the anchor of the show when they orchestrated the whole Garcelle and Erica and Sutton coming together trio. So when Garcelle and, and Erica got together to have the drinks and then Sutton came and they were laughing and kikiing and they bonded and they were drinking and everything, that was the shift from Kyle being the anchor to Garcelle being the anchor. And Garcelle even says it. She goes, I like this trio. And then you see from then on, you see a rift between Dorit and Erica, where Erica has more of Garcelle's side, Garcelle perspective. She's still in some ways trying to be there for Dorit in certain ways, but you can tell her, her allegiance has shifted. You see Kyle more on her own island spiraling about the whole Mauricio thing going on. 
clearly Sutton and Garcelle's friendship is one of the best things about it. And then obviously Crystal and Garcelle get along and they're friends. Um, Garcelle plays Anne Marie Dust because Anne Marie is pretty much irrelevant. And who else is there? Who else is there? Once they had that little trio with Sutton, Erica, and Garcelle, to me, I was like, okay, so they're shifting. And I think that means they're getting ready for Kyle's exit either way. Because usually, Kyle would be the anchor of the show. I'm not saying she's the fan favorite. I'm not saying she's the MVP. I'm not saying she's that girl. But she has always been the anchor of the show. The hub from which the friendships flow from and how people know each other and how they're attached. But I think this season, if you really watch, I think strategically, and I think the producers are in on it, they were shifting the anchor from Kyle, from Kyle to Garcelle. Because right now, Garcelle is really the anchor of the different relationships. That's why Dorit and Garcelle going head to head is such a big thing. You know, Garcelle clapping back at Dorit and putting her, in her, putting her in her place and them having to have their talks about everything. That is Garcelle saying, no, sweetheart, I'm the anchor of the show now. You need to basically kiss the ring because that's where we're at. I don't think Garcelle would have done that previously because she hasn't because Dorit has made microaggressions against her many, 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 many times. That's why it all came to a head. But she's but but Garcelle has never checked Dorit the way she's been checking her now because she knows she is now the anchor of the show. So I don't think it matters if 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 um Kyle is there or not. That's just how I feel about it. Okay. Number six. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills audience is losing interest in new star shenanigans. Fans say Beverly Hills need to be canceled. And this is according to Reddit. And Reddit is the Bible. Okay? Apart from Kyle's epic split-up drama in the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills season 13, there aren't many things fans care about in the show. People are least interested in the new star stories and have publicly shared that they want the show to end. In one Reddit thread via another feminist, fans discussed it was time for Beverly Hills to be canceled because it wasn't as interesting as before. A Redditor commented, it's getting so old, adding that the cast members are now focusing on the most basic surface level, level issues to create on-screen drama. Another Redditor wrote, bet your newbies better or bring back the oldies. I agree. It's like I was saying um, before. The problem with the franchise now is that in actual, quote, reality, there's a lot of juiciness going on. There's a lot, like I was saying, between Dorit and PK, you know, I think she's very bitter towards him. I think there's a lot of resentment there. You know, what's really going on with Kyle and Mauricio? It's not about Instagram DMs or it's it's so much bigger than that. Garcelle, I need Garcelle to talk about what's going on in her actual life, not just her her 15-year-old son's sex life. Nasty. I don't want to hear it. Um, you know, like I think all of these women. And even Sutton, I think she's sharing very um, uh, sparkly things like, oh, I want to prove this to my husband. I don't think Sutton does anything to prove anything to her ex-husband. I think all of that is just a narrative she's spinning. I think all of these women have so much more interesting real life things that if they really wanted to get vulnerable, if they really wanted to share on the show, they could, but they're not. And what we're getting now is a very shiny object front of what's really going on behind the surface. And it's like we all feel there's so much more going on, but they're not giving it. And that's why we have the disconnect. And I think that all of these women, even Erica, I think all of these women truly are would be very interesting. And I would be more invested in watching if they were giving more authenticity of what the real deal is. Like, I don't think we really know what's going on in Garcelle's life. I don't think we really know what's going on in Crystal's life. I don't think we really know what's going on in uh, Dorit's life or even Sutton's. And I think that, yes, I do think that there are levels. I do think there should be boundaries. I do think no matter what your job is, you're allowed to have privacy. 
You're allowed to have boundaries. You're allowed to keep certain things sacred. 1000%. I don't care if you are the most famous person on this planet. You don't owe everybody everything. Of course not. But what I mean is there is a lack of authenticity that's going on on the show. And I think that's the core problem that we're feeling. That's really what I mean. But I want to know what you guys think. Put it down below. All right. Number five. Bravo could cancel the show to reboot. Like Roni, the network would try a different approach to retain viewership. There's a possibility that Bravo could do the same thing to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills that they did to the Real Housewives of New York City. In 2023, the network rebooted Roni completely, bringing in a new cast, stories, and drama. Fans have also been asking Bravo to reboot, to re reboot Real Housewives of Beverly Hills since the show desperately needs it. In a recent so social media discussion via Hello Brooklyn, viewers discussed why Real Housewives of Beverly Hills deserves a complete review and new casting. The network may listen to its fans and give the series the much-needed adrenaline boost by remaining um, by re by reimagining it with new cast members. I'm gonna tell you this. I agree. I agree. I wouldn't be mad at that. And I think they're doing something similar with Atlanta because Candy Burris came out and said no one's gotten contracts, um, offers for Atlanta. And you can see when certain accounts start doing polls, like which number people do you want to come back and all that stuff. I personally think that the real reality reckoning isn't Bethany Frankel. Sorry, boo-boo. I think the real reality reckoning is that they're going to start systematically rebooting, rebooting each franchise. I think it started with New York as a test. Then I think they're going to reboot Atlanta. And then I think they're going to reboot Beverly Hills. What other franchise do we have? I think Miami Peacock will keep the same. Because remember, uh, Miami isn't Bravo, it's Peacock. Um, what other franchises do we have? Potomac? I wouldn't be surprised if, if they put Potomac on pause in general after this season. Um, but I think that's what they're going to do. And then what I think they're going to do is all of the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls trips will be more like legacy. That they're going to use the OGs or not even the OGs, but just the previous housewives on the franchise just for ultimate girls trips. And then they're going to start to do reboots for each franchise city. And I think I think they're casting, I want to say in Memphis, Tennessee, for maybe a new city, I think. That's what I saw. That could be wrong. That's what I that's what I thought it was. But I think they're going to start doing new franchises in new cities, rebooting the cities we have or forever pauses like a Dallas. And then any of the old housewives, they'll be recycled on girl on ultimate girls trips or crappy lakes, you know, spinoffs and things like that. That's what I think the real reality reckoning will be, because I do think that overall, a lot of these women the premise and the capacity of the show, there just comes a point where it's time to bow out, where it's just enough. It's just recycled over and over. No one's being real and no one's no longer invested. You know, that's what I think. Okay. Number four, Lisa Renna throws shade at the show. Again, I don't think this has anything to do with the longevity of the show, but since it's in the article, let's talk about it. Lisa doesn't want to work in toxic conditions, even though she creates them. Feeling the Real House, filming the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills has become toxic for cast members, as per Lisa. In early 2023, she shared her feelings with people and implied some reasons for her departure from the show. She said, I just think it's unhealthy. Lisa claimed she effing hated her recent months on the franchise while dealing with her mother's passing. She claimed the show wasn't right for her, hinting that it wasn't what it used to be. The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills alum's scary words indicate that the backstage may be full of tension or a toxic environment that the public doesn't know about. Ooh, child. Let's dissect how horribly wrong this is, in my opinion. Again, when we read these articles, we're reading them with a critical candy cane lens. We're not just believing what the person puts down. Number one, Lisa Renna was the toxicity herself. 
She was toxic. She was dark. She was evil. She was doing all of that behind the scenes. Number two, I don't think Lisa Renna, her opinion has any micro iota of an effect on what happens with this franchise, past, present, or future. I think that if Lisa Renna could be back on the show, she would be in a heartbeat. She would be a friend of, sidekick, all of that stuff. But they were warned not to bring Lisa Renna around. That's why you don't see her at any of the, quote, parties. We got Denise popping up. We got Camille popping up. We got Kim popping up. You know, we got Faye popping up. We don't see Renna popping up. They told her she cannot, she was person non gratis. So they're very serious about that. So I don't know what's going on with this one. That's why I tell you guys, when you read articles, always use your own common sense mind and think, does this make any sense? And it doesn't. You know what I just thought about? You know what I just thought about, guys? I have a question. For Bethany Frankel and for Lisa Renna, this is my question. How come Lisa Renna has not been on Bethany's podcast? She's had um, Rachel from Vanderpump Rules. She's had Nene. She's had somebody else is coming on on Bethany's podcast. Somebody else like that. How come Lisa Renna hasn't been on her podcast? Isn't that, isn't that interesting? You would think Lisa Renna, who has all this crap about Bravo, hasn't aligned herself with Bethany. You know why? Because Lisa Renna still wants a job. She still wants to be on the show if she can. And she realized she effed up burning the bridge when she went after Hilton. There is no way in hell she's going to align herself with Bethany Frankel and really have the door shut. But there's somebody else going on Bethany's podcast or just went on her podcast. That's sort of like this world. But you would think, right? I would actually listen to that. And then we would come on here and talk crap about it because it's fun. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Number three. There's no news on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills season 14 renewal. Bravo may consider other options before filming season 14. Bravo is pretty quick while, while renewing or green lighting its popular shows. Often fans can find the news about the announcements of new seasons early on. However, the network hasn't released any information on whether they have renewed Beverly Hills for more seasons and what's in the future for this series. The silent hints that Bravo may reconsider what to do with the spinoff after the recent season, the network may try to reboot the show, end it, or transform it into something else. The year 2024 will be a wild one for the Beverly Hills fans. Again, I think that they haven't renewed it because I think they're going to reboot it. I think they're going to find a new cast or it's going to be move forward with Garcelle as the anchor, Kyle possibly gone, and like some new people. I kind of want a reboot, to be honest with you. Or I wouldn't mind some more... Um, girlfriends or ladies of because remember they had um the real girlfriends of paris and everybody was like oh it's like the housewives no <laughs> the real girlfriends of paris was like ladies of london <laughs> that's why it wasn't called the real housewives of paris it was called the girlfriends of paris it's supposed to be like the ladies of london which obviously is also a knockoff of the housewives um but yeah i wouldn't mind some more shows like that I thought that it was like, it was cute and it was fun. And I really liked it. I, I really like Girlfriends of Paris. It was, it was cute. I liked it. All right. Number two. Let's see. Number two. The new ladies don't have chemistry. New cast members seem to hang out together solely for the sake of, for the sake of the show. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills no longer works because of the chemistry between new cast members. The change was first noticed in season 10 when many newcomers were getting to know each other. At the time, it was realized that the new cast was simply on the show for the sake of it. There was some suggestion that the ladies could never hang out with each other if, they, if it weren't for filming. Over the years, this lack of chemistry has only broadened, with even newer names joining the franchise. The show needs a cast with history and chemistry. This is what I think on that. Yes and no. 
I think, does the show need a cast? Because chemistry and history are not mutually exclusive. You can have chemistry without having history. That's how. You, that's why you have a one night stand. You meet a guy at a bar and you have a lot of chemistry, but you don't know who this person is. You can have a lot of chemistry and no history. And you could have a lot of history and no chemistry. Okay? Sutton and Kyle, they have a lot of history, but they don't have chemistry. They're not mutually exclusive. Does the cast itself need history and chemistry? Yes. But that doesn't mean it has to come in the same form because they're not mutually exclusive. Right? For example, Garcelle and Sutton had no history. They met via the show, but they had great chemistry. And that's why now they're friends. And that's what we need. Yes, we need history. People who are who are, have like, you know, real friendships and they actually know each other. But we but but beyond history, we need people who have chemistry, people who can come together, form friendships, form bonds and have fun and have a great key key. Because Sutton and Garcella are one of the one of my favorite friendships to watch on the show. And they had no history, but they had great chemistry. Right. So I think the number one thing that the people need to cast for is chemistry. Will these people get along? Will they find common ground? Will they come together? And then the problem with history is, yes, they can have history, but don't fake it because we smell when they lie. And I'll give you an example. Anna Marie, don't lie. And act like you have a history with Kyle Richards when you don't. I don't know why they want to get in our place and our faces and play like Kyle and Anne Marie. They don't have chemistry and they're lying about their history. These two women are not friends. These two women are not friends. You had Anne Marie. And again, I don't know who who's editing these shows. Because they need whoever is editing the shows, they need to do better. Because I don't know how they kept in. It was like two episodes ago. Dorit and Anne Marie were going over to Kyle's house. Okay. Anne Marie said, and, and then Dorit and, and um, Kyle are talking about Morgan. Anne Marie says, and this is on the show, who's Morgan? At this point in time, I don't care if you are a fan of the show, not a fan of the show, adjacent to the show. Everybody knows at this point in time, Morgan is Kyle's alleged lover. They've been spotted in Aspen, Timbuktu, Mexico, Beverly Hills, Texas, Idaho, Utaho, everywhere to hoe. They have been spotted every single where. They're in page six every single day, reality blurb every single day. They are doing, you know, makeout sessions in the music videos. You are going to sit here and tell me that Kyle Richards and, and Anne Marie are friends and Anne Marie has no idea who the hell Morgan Wade is. And you want to sit and play in my face and tell me that Anne Marie and Kyle are friends. Bye. That's the problem. Don't lie about the history between two people. That's what, that's when it doesn't work because we, the audience, shout out to Bethany Frankel. We are smarter than you. And when you try to lie to us, we know. And that's what makes us not want to watch. That's what makes the show not fun because you're lying to us. Just be like, oh my gosh, this is Anne Marie. You know, um, she seems really cool. We don't know each other that well. We're getting to know each other. And I would love to introduce her to the group of friends. And I want, and I, I'm getting to know her. We're all getting to know her together. She seems really great. Boom, done. I would buy into that because I personally don't need history. It's nice, but I would prefer chemistry. That's why I love watching Sutton and Garcelle because they're a hoot. They're a hoot. I love them together because they have great chemistry. That's the problem. It's the lying of it all. Anne Marie literally said, who's Morgan? Dorit could have fell off of her, off of her chair because you're going to sit here and play in my face and tell me these two people are friends. I knew, I know who Morgan Wade is, and I've never met any of these people a day in my life. I'm better friends with Kyle than Anne Marie is at this point, to be perfectly honest with you. I know more about this woman than Anne Marie knows. And then Anne Marie comes in so hot against Sutton in defense of her friend, Kyle. Now we know that's fake. That's a mouthpiece. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. That's what the problem is. It's not about people not having a history. 
It's about the lying about the history. And it's about cast members not having chemistry. Not a chemistry fit, Anne-Marie. Anne -Marie. She's not a chemistry fit. You know who else isn't quiet as this kept? Crystal. Not a chemistry fit. Not a chemistry fit. That's why she's so quiet on the show and barely there and they're editing her out. She, she, her herself, I think is fine if she showed up more. But on a chemistry level, she doesn't fit that well in with the girls. You know who was a chemistry fit but was evil as hell? Lisa Renna. She was a chemistry fit. When it came to it, she she could she gathered the girls, she got them together, she had the faux fox five. She was a chemistry fit. The problem was she was really evil and dark. You know? That's what the problem is. They're they're not finding the right people who have the right chemistry. That is what makes a great show. That's why Vanderpump Rules was so great because it had authentic history and, auth and, and authentic chemistry. That's why Vanderpump Rules was such a diamond in the rough because these people really knew each other and these people truly had chemistry. But when they tried to force it later on, seasons eight and nine, seven, eight, nine, with the whole Max and Dana and all these other weird people, when they tried to force it, that's when it started to fall off and Scandaball saved it. When they started to force history with people who had no chemistry. So that's really what's going on here. So casting producers, if you're listening, your number one thing you need to test for is chemistry. And if you get history, then you've lucked out. Okay, but that's the best way to do. And and ideally, when you are, you know, casting friends or people who know each other, you think that you have you would have both history and chemistry, but that's not always the case. Right. But you don't always have to do that. Like, um, like Dubai, those women, I don't think had a lot of history, but I think at the end of the day, we'll get there with the chemistry. You know, anyway, there's that. Now let's move on to the number one reason. Major storylines have concluded. OG cast members' interesting stories have reached their, their resolution. I agree with this. This I agree with. Like any reality TV show, Beverly Hills is all about cast members and their journeys. Unsurprisingly, many of their journeys have concluded over the last 13 years. Nowadays, Beverly Hills seems like a series without a purpose, which impacts it negatively. The show has no watchworthy storylines, and none of the drama appears as genuine. When the cast was new to the series, each of them had certain goals in their minds. Witnessing their stories unfold and watching them reach their destinations was entertaining. Unfortunately, The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills has no major plot left anymore, which calls for a reboot. This I agree with. This is one that I agree with. I do think that um, um, I, I, I think it's a wrap. You know, I think that like all cycles in everybody's life, it comes to it comes to an inevitable end, you know, and and when you see people try to hold on when their end has come, it doesn't bode well. That's what happened with Nini in Atlanta. Her particular cycle came to an end, but she wanted to hold on to it. And that blew up in her face. You know, Kyle, I think her cycle has come to an end, but she's still holding on. And it's just, it's sour. It's like, what's that saying? Like guests and fish start to stink after three days. Everything has an expiration. And when you try to force something beyond its expiration, it starts to stink. And that is why this season is stinking. Yes, there are great moments. Yes, there are um, great kikis at times and I'm watching and I'm enjoying it and we're talking about it. But I agree it's missing its oomph that it used to have. It's, it's, it's you know, I love Beverly Hills. I watch every single episode since forever. But it's missing something because things aren't fresh. Everything to me is, is, seems a little stale. And I do think that reboots are necessary. And it's nothing against the women. It's nothing against Kyle. It's nothing against anybody on the cast. It's just, honestly, at the end of the day, it's kind of just business. It's just good storytelling. To be honest with you, it's both business and creative. It's good storytelling. If your characters, because they are playing characters, whether they're on reality or not, if your character's journey 
your hero's journey has come to an end, it's the end. It's the end. It's just basic storytelling. And that's why things aren't working. That's why there's no storylines. That's why things don't seem genuine. That's why they're fighting over nothing. That's why they're talking about all these weird things is because people like Potomac. That could have a reboot. To be honest with you, I, don't, I can't name one woman on that show that I feel invested in. And I, and I like them. It's not personal. I like, like Karen. I love Karen. But I think that is a cast for whatever. Well, there's a lot of reasons, but that's for a whole other video. That energy cesspool needs to go. It went to a certain toxic level that I don't think it's able to come out of. You know what I mean? That that needs to um to come out, but but yeah. So I want to know what you guys think. Which of these 10 reasons do you agree with? I did not agree with all of them. I agreed with some of them. I want to know which ones you agreed with and which ones you didn't agree with. And do you think this will be the last season of Beverly Hills as we know it? I think it could be. I definitely think if they come back for season 14, it might be a swan song. Like if they might be wrapping a lot of things up and then do a reboot. Or they might pull it Atlanta and just don't renew contracts and ha leave people hanging and see what happens. So I want to know what you guys think. Put it down below. Are you watching? Are you still watching? Do you want to reboot? Do you want OGs? What do you guys think? And be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And as always, be sure to grab a conspiracy tea, which is linked down below. Because we don't believe in coincidence. We only believe in conspiracy. So with that, you guys, I'm going to drop the link in case anybody wants to come up and chat. And da, 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 I'll take some candy cane questions and comments. But I'm going to take a little sip first to give my voice a little bit of a break. I've been talking for two and a half hours, so. So, yeah, there we go. Okay, you guys. All right, let's see here. If I miss anybody's comment or question, I apologize. I'm just going to start at a random place. So if I missed you, well, you know, I'll just start at the top and see what happens. Nataki says, hi, Candy. Hey, sweetheart. Chocolate Chunk says, hey, everyone. I'm closer to the bored to tears category at this point. Barbara says, of course, it's turning ugly. It always does. Nataki says, it's almost to the point of no return. T chocolate chunks the same hey chocolate thank you for being a channel member chocolate chunks i appreciate you don says i'm sick to death of kyle and this morgan wade bs me too don honestly like i didn't even review the last two episodes because i was just so tired of kyle and morgan wade like if it's real i'm exhausted if it's fake i'm also exhausted like either way you slice it i'm over it Chocolate Chunks, has anyone noticed last episode Kyle said she is moving once Portia finishes school? Didn't sound like Mo was included in those plans. Yup. Yup. And that also means she's going to leave the show because she seems like she's moving to some place in nature, which sounds delightful. Tay Tay says Ariana is suing Sandoval for the house. Yup. Hey, Natasha, you want to share? Hey, I don't got hey. much to say, but like I'm getting bored with these ladies. I'm sorry. Like, I notice I get bored mm -hmm. because I, like, once it pops into, like, my queue on Peacock, there was no rush to watch it. Same like, deep. I took days. I, like, kind of, like, forced myself when I was, like, super bored to watch it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's not doing it anymore for me. I'm tired mm -hmm. of these same, it's the same thing every year. And it's yeah. not working. I'm over it. I'm really, really tired of Kyle. Like, and it's not just because I don't like her. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I'm just tired of it. I don't even care about this homo thing. I really don't. Like, I just caught myself, like, literally not caring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I don't. And it's just like, I don't even care about this Morgan thing. It's just weird. Like, when I think about it, I just can feel my energy just draining out of my body. And it's just like, no. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm just, I, I almost feel like there should be a rule. That after like 10 years, max, max 10 max. years. And I would even maybe argue five. Because I feel like five is when they start getting a little crazy. Like they start getting a little too like big for their britches, you know? 
I say five, but that's the writer in me because, you know, when we write, we always do five acts. Mm. So I think each year should be an act and then, and yeah. then you wrap it up. So I mean, yeah, the I, story's up. I think it's, it's been up. The story's up. It's been up. Because a lot of the people who've been on longer than five years, a lot of what they do is deflecting from their own lives yes. and they're stirring the pots in other people. Like Kyle, this is the first time we're saying anything about her real life. And she's been it's on the fi- show in like 15 since years. Day one. Like- like I'm done. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's not, no, that's not, that's pathetic. In mm-hmm. 15 years, that means she should have been gone a lot, like 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Exactly. She's 10 years overdue. 10 years overdue. I think it should be, I think, I think, I think it should be five years. Yeah. If for whatever reason, they're still interesting authentically, then yeah. fine, keep them, but don't keep them for the sake of this like OG narrative. Like I'm tired. Nope. Like I, I want new people. I mean, if they're really good I'm OGs, like, they can get tossed in a girl's trip. Like you know what I mean? That's what I would do. Bravo. If you're Leg- listening, we'll just have some throw around some legacy girls I'll trips give, for I'll all the OGs. Some, I'll give you some free strategy. Okay. Yep. Use all the old housewives for um, ultimate girls trip. Milk that. Those do great. They're easy to produce. We pop, like pop, them. Pop, They're pop, quick. Pop, peacock. We like them. And reboot all the franchises. Yeah. Adam, baby, how are you? Good. How Adam. are you? Good. I'm gonna talk go to on us. mute to rest my voice, so you guys just talk, okay? You can go, okay. Adam. Okay. 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 I mean, how? At, at least seven of these ten signs, which is absolute BS. I mean, I did not <laughs> buy them. I, I just did not buy them for the first second that I looked at them, and I, 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 I don't know. With this cast, it's all. Wait, what's that? It's, what's that sound in the background? <laughs> it sounds like a TV show. Um, oh, with, I don't know. I'm on mute. It, I think it was Natasha. <laughs> Um, I turned but, it down. Way to call me out, gosh! I'm just gonna... <laughs> um, but in in terms of this show, there's just something slacking with it. Ever since Vanderpump left in season nine, I've always had a different way of looking at this show. Like my outlook completely changed, and I'm not saying that just because I'm British. But Lisa Vanderpump was everything for that show for me, and I I don't know. I like the old organicness of what Beverly Hills used to be. Beverly Hills used to be showing a life that you could only imagine. And that kind of just went out of the picture when um, I would say that um, Fat Boy Kemsley's wife came on the scene in season seven. Mm -hmm. Because from seasons one to six, you know, until Yolanda left, you saw life that was earthly and imaginable to many people. And now we don't really see that. We just see all these Encino folk. You know, I'm not here to watch Real Housewives of Encino. I'm here to watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Show me Bel Air. Show me Malibu. Encino is just no wish at its highest peak. And Natasha and I have been talking about this non stop with, with just generally with all these shows that it's just not, there's just no energy. Like it's almost like we. I'm bored with all of them. Uh, uh, and with, with this 8.5 cast member, there's a reason why they're sitting by themselves on the after show. I mean, I don't even get to see. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I don't even get to see it over here because they don't show it here, but all the clips on Instagram is just mocking her <laughs> or whatever they are, you know, by themselves. Not for um, nothing, just because I'm like a sensitive Sally. Like, I know she's like the worst and she's so annoying, but like, I almost feel bad for her because she's really taking a beating, y'all. <laughs> like, really? Like, like, okay, sorry. Like, like, like she, I mean, to, to me, just what and and also they're, they're just classless who who the hell says that at a memorial service oh he sat in her esophagus you guys are the closest to her like exactly I, like like honestly to was me was that your american voice no that was that that was me just pretending <laughs> to be her because she, she just sounds it. boring <laughs> i mean i'm joking uh, I, 
And I don't know what it is, but there's just something wrong with 8.5's disposition in general. Just she just looks uncomfortable. Like I don't know, like they're constipated the whole time. It's just there's something not right with them. But in terms of the cast, I'm only mainly watching this show now because of Sutton Garcelle and Erica. As much as people may have their things about Erica, she to me is someone who spells it out. And I like that type of energy. And, you know, with regards to the whole Denise thing, as much as many people may have been on Denise's side, I think Erica spells it out and delivered. I mean, at the end of the day, Denise wasn't honest about what happened in season 10. That's why that chaos turned into chaos. But we, would, would you two say this is the worst season of Beverly Hills so far? The worst season? Um Because I would. This one. <laughs> I would say it's the flattest, but I think the worst was what they did to LVP in the sense of like how I felt about the show. That was the worst for me. The way they treated her, yeah. that made me really sick. But I think this True. is the the flattest episode. Yeah, the flattest. flattest season. Flat. Yes. Yeah, flat flattest. flattest. Uh, yeah, flat. that's what I meant. In terms of like, yeah, flat. What do you think, Natasha? Sorry, my I was my ADHD is kicking in. I was I was Candy, and I was saying like, what do you think is the flattest season of Beverly Hills? Flattest? Yeah, um, like the, the most boring. Yes. I can't really like in my head. I don't have the capacity to just take a quick inventory of like every storyline. I'm sure I could like if someone brought it up, I would be like, oh yeah, per usual, but. I mean, right now I'm just bored and I just not because of Lisa. I'm not like, see, Lisa's right. We need to bring her back. It's not that. It's just, I'm just tired of these same old, same old. I'm just tired of looking at these same people to be, that's what it really is. I'm tired of looking at these same people. I'm not saying they should do exactly what NYC did because I'm not truly convinced either because those women didn't really know each other and we could tell. Yes. M M I see, I did not I did not like the revamp at all. That just looks so forced and fake to me. Yeah, I like but... Jenna Lyons, but I like Jenna Lyons and I mean others what had interesting characters to them. I mean Uber definitely stood out, but I don't know if I'd say she was the best person on the show by no, all means. But not, not but, but, but 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 to to me Candy. what I think what <laughs> What I think needs the biggest <laughs> revamp out of all the shows is is Potomac more than this show, because yeah. in the, because because like you know we all we all wonder how this one cast member has survived eight years and they just are so recycled and dry. Mm -hmm. I mean, but but with with Kyle, you know there there is something odd about how that show was formed because my understanding is that. They desperately wanted Kathy Hilton, Kim, and Kyle all to be on the same show because Bravo originally wanted to have the three sisters um, uh, and make it make it a show based on just them. But when Kathy was out of the picture because she wanted Paris to have her whole thing with, um, I don't know what show it was on, Simple Life or something. But yeah. But, but, think, but no, go ahead. But 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 then then you had people like Lisa Vanderpump, Camille, mm -hmm. and Adrian who were the Beverly Park residents. Mm -hmm. Kyle, actually, funnily enough, when she first came on, when the show first started, she was actually one of the poorest. <laughs> yeah. No, she really was. She was like in a regular, regular house. Yeah, and I think um, bringing up the Roni reboot, I think that the. The strategy was correct. The execution was wrong. Like, I think that they, I think the stats, the strategy is right. I do think a lot of these franchises do need to be rebooted, but the execution was wrong because again, they didn't think about chemistry. None of these women had chemistry. Is that, that's like the biggest problem, you know, instead of faking a history between people that you'd want on a show, cast people who actually have chemistry. That's why in the biz <laughs> as you guys know like when say you're shooting um a movie or a television series when you get the leads the people who are going to play opposite of each other for 90 minutes or over the course of 
18 episodes or whatever it is, when you get to the end, they have something that's literally called a chemistry test because mm -hmm. an actor can be amazing, but it doesn't mean that their energy translates with another actor's energy. And so you could be, you could get all the way to the end and you could get this drop. But if you fail that chemistry test with the bigger actor or the actor who's really going to, who's going to get that other role, they're not going to hire you. And, and those are people, of course they're acting, but reality TV, they're basically acting too. Let's be serious at this point. Yeah. So yeah. that's the biggest problem is that these people don't have any chemistry between them. You could get strangers off, like look at shows like love is blind or, um, I don't know any other reality show. The majority of those shows are strangers, but they're amazing yes. and they work because they. But they're, they're not based on ask. friendship. Well, the, this is the thing: the show is based on friendship, but it doesn't mean that it's based on a lifelong friendship. Like for exactly. example, for example, Sutton and Garcelle, I think is like the hallmark of this. They mm -hmm. these are two women who literally met on the show together, and right now they are carrying the show based on their friendship. Yeah, I think with them two though, in season ten, there was like not they didn't really have anything in common, but it, when season eleven formed, that by the end of season ten, start of season eleven, they had that natural organicness. And that's why people yeah. as you said said um could see, you know, the energy with this eight point five trying to act like she's Kyle's best friend. Like you know, and saying yeah. who is more good. Like that I, that's what I kind of liked is that, you know, not necessarily, you know, I think, you know, having chemistry is, is a big factor, but I wouldn't say when Garcelle and Sutton first met, they had really much chemistry to start off with, but they formed that naturally by their humor, by their wit, because I think they're both funny people in real life and what have you. But, you know, so, someone, um, for for example, someone like Crystal, to me, I don't really think has really been a natural fit for this show. She may have mm -hmm. what one of the most expensive homes on the show, but she just it just seems forced a bit like how w Wendy Osifo was so desperate to go on Potomac. You know, I don't really know many professors that want to be on reality shows, but that was just desperate because. <laughs> It was someone trying to branch out from the direction that they were going. Like she felt stuck in this academia, but she was proud of it. And she was like, kind of like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Indoctrinated to believe like that's, that's what gives you the strength is how many um, accolades and, and like um, certificates and degrees you can accumulate, you know? But deep down inside, she, she wanted more. And so that's why she went about it that way. I don't know. That's just what I get. But, but, but I can. But, but to me, but like, I, I just feel for with Crystal, there is just, you know, I'm, I'm glad she's delivering, um, in this upcoming episode. But aside from that, she's just been pretty bland to me. She just is, kind of like how, um. Kind of, kind of like how Dorit sometimes wanted to just jump in with, uh, with Kyle, Brenna, and Erica. She just like stick her, um, stick her nose in, as one would say. Um, uh, and and with Crystal, I just also feel that she's just confusing in general. She doesn't make any sense. And this is the only one thing I question about Sutton, is that Crystal for two seasons in a row was going non-stop how Sasha said something dark she did this and she she was this that 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 and now they've formed some weird friendship and if someone was to make allegations of me with all these nasty things i wouldn't really want to meet them on such a frequent basis as they do mm -hmm. and um and and the one thing that i would say I liked about Kyle last season was at the reunion because um, Kyle's like, you know, words like violated and then Crystal saying, didn't you feel violated when someone broke into your home? And she said, yes, someone broke into my home. They didn't give me a jacket. And that just, <laughs> I, 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 that just summed Crystal up for a nutshell to me, you know, just, I, you know, we, but the thing, the thing that, Crystal has one benefit is that Kyle hates her with a passion because 
she's more of Kathy's friend than her friend and Kyle wanted her to be a minion but mm-hmm. because she's like, but because she's like I know your richer sister I'm gonna hang out with you <laughs> <laughs> that part and like I yeah think, it's um, like she's tolerating her mm-hmm. and like Anne Marie like I think if she would have came on not trying to fake history with Kyle with this whole like I'm gonna be loyal to Kyle and go after Sutton and actually I mean her personality seems like it stinks but just in case it doesn't stick. <laughs> if she came on and was just like herself and like actually tried to get to know the other women on her own terms, maybe she would be a better fit. Maybe she would have more chemistry. Maybe we would like her a little bit more. But it's when you go on the show thinking, I have to fake a history with someone in order to be relevant. That's when you get the foot, you know? Like it's crazy. And I know I shouldn't call her the foot, but she looks like a foot to me. So I'm going to call her the foot. And Crystal. That's a- Crystal's <laughs> biggest problem was she, wait like, you, right? you could have you could have a foot she's, like her, she's, the, she's the foot she's the foot I love your Crystal. commitment to that Candy yeah. all day all day and Crystal it's like the problem with Crystal is this she could have gotten out of that Sutton debacle if she just would have said you know what it felt like a violation or whatever to me however I understand that was not her intention then she could have gotten out of it like that because you're allowed to have your feelings. Everybody has their stuff. Maybe she was naked in there or she was doing something in there or something but happened to her before. But she doubled down. But, the, but, but, when you, yeah. but when you double down on this person did this to me, that's the problem. Rather than saying this is how I felt versus this is what you meant. <laughs> feelings are facts. Nobody fast. believes Sutton was trying to hey. violate Crystal. Yeah, so feelings are facts. But- but it's the way exactly. it's, the, it's the way that she did it two seasons in a row. Then yeah, your feelings uh, I, are valid, but they're not facts. I, I, and uh, and my friend sent me this clip um, of the after show where um, where she even tried to say mention it just briefly again, just how you know I was. You guys never let me explain my situation with Sutton because. You know the scene where she got cut out saying every this group wants me to scream all the F in time? <laughs> she, 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 she said to Dorit on the after show, you guys didn't let me explain my situation with Sutton because I didn't scream. And it's just like, please, like as much even as much as I, I don't like Fatboy Kemsley and his wife, Dorit's face said it all. I mean, this is the thing. Garcelle doesn't scream. And she gets her point across very well. So Crystal doesn't know what she's talking about. She just needs to speak up. And to be honest with you, Crystal fumbled the bag at, um, was it her own party when Dorit was yeah. like, did you tell Sutton that I said that she had Bach in her coffee? And Crystal got all flustered. And she's like, oh, well, I, I did say that, but I want to get it right. And Dorit was like, well, it seems like you got it wrong when she'd actually told the truth. It's like, Crystal, like, that is the what well, that's what we're talking about like you didn't have to yell you didn't have to scream you just had to literally talk and like you couldn't even talk like girl get it together what do you think they're gonna do do you think they really are gonna reboot no recap? no no because kyle's in the picture kyle kyle is best friends with these executive producers she constant i i constantly see on queen zavaro that she is all the time hanging out with that Alex Alex Baskin and Douglas Ross. Guys. Yeah, they're like holding hands, skipping in meadows. The, the, she she literally took them to Aspen with them. I'm last done. Year. That seems like bribery. I don't like but, that. But but she's she's done it for years though. She, she's gone on vacation with. Yep. It's weird. Like I'm sorry, but if I I'm sorry, that's I, inappropriate. But, no. But she she's been doing it for like the last five, six, seven years. I believe it. But, and and she they're not going to get rid of her. And and my thing is, even if they did get rid of her. Then you have to. They're like, we've gotten good at skiing. We can't afford to not lose this yearly but, trip. <laughs> but 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 the thing is, though, on other franchises, you have people like Candy Burris who are publicly now throwing shade at the network, saying Bravo is tripping because they're not paying me my two million dollars <laughs> because they haven't given her the contract yet. And you know, but the thing is, Candy and Kenya and all those folks. They don't have that relationship with the truly production company. 
whilst Kyle, because the network wanted to do this show with all the three sisters and, I don't know, make it make it the Kardashians for people in their 40s or something. I don't know what they wanted to do, but but that they, that's what they wanted to do. And they were up Kyle's ass and Kathy's ass to begin with. So that's the that's the origin of these producers that work for this evolution media company is that they would they really and truly have always been up Kyle's ass. And I I, I don't know. It, okay, let me ask ask you this, um, Candy. And that yes, my that, that's if okay. <laughs> so so, so ex- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was just <laughs> uh, exclude an eight point five because they don't really exist to me. Okay. Um, if you had to fire, um, it exclude eight point five and Kyle because eight point five doesn't exist to me, and Kyle isn't going to go mm-hmm. um, because which two cast members out of Dorit, Sutton, Garcelle, Erica would you get rid of? Crystal and. Um, I think Crystal could go. Crystal could go. I'm tired of her too. She doesn't bring anything that is unique. And what I mean I by keep that waiting is for like, her and she's not doing it. Mm-hmm. Like each person has to bring something unique to the pot to give them a reason to hold the peach or the diamond or whatever, the, or the flute or whatever the case and is. And I don't like how I don't really know who she is. I don't really, really understand who she is. And it's been three years. Sorry, you got to go. Yeah, I think I, I think Crystal can go. Um, you said two. Who else yes. <laughs> uh, so you can't you can't pick Kyle eight point five because eight point five isn't a cast member. They just came in episode six, so they don't care. Chris, Crystal and Dorit can go because as much as I disdain Erica, I do think that if I can suspend my you know disbelief for a bit and pretend she's a human being and put all the thrust <laughs> stuff to the side. I do think that um, Garcelle Sutton and Erica are a vibe. And so yeah. I think that the three 100%. of them together, Yeah, they're a vibe. They're definitely a vibe. So I would keep them, those three. Kyle is a, you know, producer plant, so she'll she'll be there. Um, Dorit can go. Dorit could be a friend of. I wouldn't mind having her around sometimes, but she doesn't need to hold a diamond. No. Um, yeah. Anne Marie, obviously. She can come on a cast go, trip or two. Crystal can go. Dorit can go. But that's who I would keep. And then I would bring in, uh, that's four. So I would bring in three more, three new full-time diamonds who are fresh. Not necessarily, it would be nice if the new people, see, this is what I think the problem is. This is what I think the problem is when it comes to history. I think the problem is that casting or producers think that they ha- the history has to be between a current cast member and a new cast member, which I don't think has to be the case. I actually think it would be super interesting if, sure, they may know them peripherally or whatever the case may be, but I think it actually be really interesting if the three new people came on, if they had if they had a friendship or if two of them had a friendship and they came on the show and they had their own history as newbies on the show and then join the group and see what that looked like as long as they were all a like chemistry fit. I think that would be super interesting um, because I think that's a big problem. That's why we get people lying about their history. They think that a person on the cast has to usher them on the show. I don't think it has to really be that way. Like I love watching like Made in Chelsea. And yeah, you watch Made in Chelsea. Oh my God. Oh. Where's I watch Made in Chelsea? Are you kidding? You, you, you watch you, Made you, in Chelsea Sydney? You, oh my God. You, Sorry. But, uh, I, I, I'm an uh, old school uh, uh, Made in Chelsea watcher. Ma- I remember but, Spencer and stuff. Yeah, I was shipping the star. I mean, I know, it wasn't. <laughs> but but but, but with, with the current season of current season of Made in Chelsea, Temps can just go. He oh my is god, just, Temps is insufferable. Like he, no he is just, whiny poo. He, like he he he's the Jax Taylor of yeah. Yeah, of, yeah. Okay. Temps can go. He's too much. But what? I, but, but why I brought up Made in Chelsea is like that's another reality show based on friendship. But the yes. way they bring people on is 
they meet in real life, like quote in real life, like at a bar or at the beach. And they meet these new people that now become cast members. They don't pretend like they've known these people forever. And then these people join the cast and then they become friends from there. Yeah, and they it like works bump better into them and or it's something. more organic. Yeah, like bump in like, oh, I met this girl at the bar and now we're all hanging I out. I met them and at then, the coffee shop. I met them Can at I bring the coffee them around? shop and now we're, now we're all hanging out forever. And I like that more because it doesn't have this air of you're lying to me. <laughs> Fake yeah. Is, yeah, lying. You know? And it's like, and it's also like I can suspend my belief and realize, yes, I'm watching a reality show. So I'm just going to roll with it that they're going to meet this person at the coffee shop and now they're all having sex and having and and dating and doing this and fighting but and pretending all this that they're friends and they've pretending known them all along. I'm going to roll with it because you're not lying to me. Right. You know, and I think that's yeah. more of the approach that producers and casting should take that the history that first is like it should be chemistry first. Don't fake a history. Just do a little. It could be like a one scene explanation. And then we're going to roll with it because at the end of the day, we know we're watching TV. We are here for entertainment and we, it's OK for you to do to 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 sort of scuff it a little bit like that. But when you fake these history between these people, that's when you lose us. Yes. You know, but, and you don't have to do that because they do it on those other shows and it works perfectly fine. But I'm glad, I'm glad that you're admitting that Erica with Garcelle and Sasha is a vibe because. <laughs> yeah, I never said she wasn't. I just, I just want her to go to jail. This is the thing. When I have opinions, <laughs> like I was just saying, it's not personal to me. I can. It's I, not I, personal. I just want. It's her not. It's jail. not personal to me. Like I can say, I think Erica is a vibe with these three women, and I can also say the chick needs to go to jail, and I think she's evil uh, for what she's trying to do with with the victims. Because I don't just do um, just if I quote like a person or not like a person. I I say it like I mean it, and I think I give credit where credit's due. They are a vibe. Honestly, the three of them hanging out is the best part of this whole freaking season. I'm tired of Kyle having 100. a freaking mental breakdown in the corner all day long. <laughs> Girl, stop. stop. <laughs> Leave Morgan alone. Break yeah. the contract. Let this woman go live her life. Morgan looks like a freaking caged animal. It's like, blink twice, Morgan. We will come and get you, girl. Like, really true. Like, I feel bad for uh, Morgan. Let's put uh, someone uh, a note. I mean, what? like, no, no, no offense to her, but like, I don't know what I'm looking at with the, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> no idea. It's crazy. It's crazy. We're confused. I, I mean, like the the whole thing with everything now is just so, you know, there's all different things. I mean, like, I mean, my, I, I mean, I, I, I think I told, told, told I like the the whole incident. It's situation with this Morgan thing is just I don't know. Like I I just and and my my friend was telling me that Kyle did an Instagram live the other day and sh that Morgan thing was there. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were talking about pronouns. <laughs> you guys are I don't nope. need Paul Richards to educate me on the <laughs> And the uh, and the uh, the no, it's the Morgan person saying how pronouns are important. <laughs> I don't need Morgan to educate me on a damn thing either. Morgan can't educate herself out of a freaking paper bag. Got herself in this uh, contract with Kyle. <laughs> Morgan, uh. what do you like? Do you actually believe for five seconds that? She's going to leave me for this. <laughs> no! I feel so bad. I mean, Morgan always looks creeped out by Kyle. And I think, I mean, people say they sell their soul to the devil for fame. This might be a, t a, t a type of that. Because like her Morgan face looks, reads, I can't believe my manager is making me do this. Her face <laughs> reads, I am scared. I'm I scared. I'm frightened. <laughs> Mama, papa. I'm scared. I'm just I... Yeah, mama, papa. Like how? <laughs> For real. Hilarious. Yeah. She does. She looks scared and confused. All but, of the time. The, but the the <laughs> but the, 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 the thing is, they just why why be so phony with us? Like no one is taking this seriously. They, I mean, they think we're dumb. They, we've established that. They genuinely think we're dumb. I mean, 
I mean, the only right thing that Bravo I don't know done... what gave them that, but they think we're dumb, and it's uh, weird. <laughs> I mean, one of the only one of the only good things of this season of Beverly Hills is the after show. How eight point five is on a chair by themselves, like the... <laughs> She's She'd be better not even on that. Like it's just like her her just appearance is fake to me. You don't know any of these ladies. You're acting real desperate and thirsty. You're acting really, really strange towards Sutton. It's just all a weird fakeness. You're not particularly likable. Your husband's sketchy. It's just like, no, girl, it, it's not working. Agree. <laughs> But but the other board person is the person who got fired who wants to think that it's some resignation bloody letter. It, yeah. is that, so so when so so for for the last ever since Vanderpump left Beverly Hills, every single year she would make jabs at how Vanderpump Rules is shouldn't be a show and all this stuff and how she only respects Vanderpump Rules because of La La Kent, not because of Lisa which is an interesting one. When this year's trailer for Vanderpump Rules came out, she said the show should be cancelled. <laughs> she is the most jealous, thirsty, Who said that? weirdo. Renna, Renna, yes. Uh, I can't. She's been watching Renna, for years. you sound silly. You just sound like really bitter you're like actually very embarrassing bitter. yourself it's, it's embarrassing like i'm getting second embarrassment could you look so obviously bitter and bothered and it's unbecoming of you because she she she's been saying for years that lisa vanderpump has the same kyle power with the producers and if it was any anyone else they would have never given her a show but because she's a british lady with money they gave it to her no, they gave her the show because she's a whole entire vibe. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. why they gave her a show because she's a vibe yeah. and she's a savvy businesswoman. That's why she has multiple spinoffs, which is uh, she has the new one, uh, Vanderpump Villa. It's on like Hulu, right? I'm, I'm looking forward to that because the only thing that annoys me is that is that there's not a single non-American cast member. I wish there was someone internationally because that mm. <laughs> it would it. it, it because um, you feel left but, out. We get it. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, it could have been me. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> next but, time, but, but, but 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 um, <laughs> next time. But 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 but, <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, can, can, oh, that comment, Candy, I look. <laughs> How did you slip that one up? Like, what do you, you said, I love. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was on a roll. I was like, I love, I love Sutton. I love Garcelle. I love Kyle. I was like, wait, I don't love him. Because what I was saying was like, I, I guess her I, name I, is one syllable and we're so used to saying her name because she's been on, she's the only one who's been on every single season. So it makes sense. No, so what I was saying was I feel like all of the women on the show aren't happy. And I was saying, even though I like them, like I love Sutton and I love Garcelle, but they don't seem happy. That's what I was saying. And I was like, and I love Kyle. And I was like, wait, what? You guys like, no, you don't. <laughs> but I will say for, for Lisa Vanderpump, she truly is a boss because the reason why I brought up that uh, Vanderpump Villa is on Hulu is because Hulu has an alliance with ABC and it's very, very hard, very, very, very hard for talent to um, jump networks. So the fact that Lisa Vanderpump is able to have Vanderpump Rules and her spinoffs on NBC, but then also have her other show on ABC, essentially, because Hulu and ABC yeah. are basically in cahoots. That's huge. Wait, it's wait really so, so a, 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 ABC is Disney-owned, right? Just like a, how ABC, Hulu is Disney. Disney, Hulu, yeah. that's why they get all those bundles yeah, yeah, because, yeah. yeah, because, because, um, because Freddie and I were saying about this, how you really have to be on another level to... Uh, make NBC angry, but they still will keep you because they know mm -hmm. you're 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 because they know you're so dapper to be to be on Disney. Like you know, to to have a Hulu show yeah. uh, and an NBC show literally in the same year. You know, you know, you know they're pissed. You know they're pissed. That's why you see all of Candy spinoffs and stuff on. Like that's why you know how Candy Burris and yes. Todd did the pass. Where do you see yes. the pass at Peacock? 
and maybe uh, I'm like a B T or something like that. But like, wait, what's the, the what's the pass? What's the, the pass? pass is, oh, the pass is the movie that um, Todd and Candy produced uh, okay. with Drew <laughs> Door in it. What I mean, but it's like, it, but it dates <laughs> TikTok and everything. And there's no shade to that. What I'm saying is that usually <laughs> when there's like talent that's deeply involved with the executives and networks, they like to keep the talent within that pool. That's why you'll have like, um, you know how Kyle did like the Housewives Holidays holiday special that was for a Peacock special because they like to keep their money in-house. They don't want to have invested in a talent. Like, for example, we love Lisa Vanderpump, but she's LVP because she was on the show. All of these people were on the show. That's why they're who they are in our eyes today. So they don't want to take their, because they're looking at these people as investments. They've invested in her. In, mm -hmm. her, in her equity. Because the reason why we're going to go to Hulu is because we are invested in Lisa Vanderpump. The reason why we're invested in Lisa Vanderpump was because she was on Bra a Bravo show that we became invested in. So they're looking at these people as investments. And so the reason why they don't like them going to other networks is because basically they're taking all of that brand equity, all of that investment, all of that brand awareness, all of that baked in audience to another platform. And they don't like that. They're like, we've invested in you. We've paid you. We've mm -hmm. given you spinoffs. If you're going to do another show, you're doing it for us. Because now you're going to go make our competitor money? We don't think so. Yeah, I mean, 100%. Because yeah. I, 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 as you said, that's why Miss Overpaid got her Drew Sedora movie on Peacock. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they like to keep uh. the money in-house. I, I yeah. still can't believe I still can't believe how mad Candy is on on Instagram. About, about Candy Burris, she, I know. Yeah, is she, she, I don't even follow yeah, her. Her voice no, I bugs don't, me. I don't, I don't follow her, but Queens of Bravo was just was just trolling her the other day because she was saying, "Oh, they're tripping," and just like going by proper <laughs> triggered mode, and just not nonstop, just all over the place. I mean, yeah. I, I, but but with with Lisa Vanderpump, I I put I don't know if they would be pay, paying her the same money as it's a brand new show uh, as Vanderpump Rules, but but with but with this Hulu show, it's going to be a vibe. Uh, but I yeah. want to see a I want to see a proper trailer though because that was just a teaser. You know how we got a teaser in November for Vanderpump Rules? That was like yeah. a I want to see a proper trailer, but but the the thing that um with with this season of Beverly Hills going back, with with the with the Denise Erica situation, did production? Do you believe that production pretty much said you're not allowed to say Trashy Randy's name because of the Caroline Manzi lawsuit? Wait, because what? because so with the Erica versus De versus Denise scene about okay. and Denise was like watch the show watch the show you know what I'm talking about watch the show mm -hmm. um, when she when she was high AF and uh, and she she could have just said Brandy but she didn't and and for I was I was discussing this with Freddie the other day and we were like is that because of the Caroline Manzo lawsuit that Brandy's involved with, Bravo doesn't want anyone mention her name. Is that literally the only reason? No, I actually I think that um, the real reason why Denise was pissed at Erica was what she said because of what she because of what she alluded to with Sammy. I don't think she was talking about the Brandy hookup story. I think that's why she was pissed at Erica because this is the problem. Erica personalized when Denise and her were at the lunch talking about the threesome and conversation where in reality, if you, when the clips, Denise wasn't blaming Erica, she was just talking about the situation, it, but Erica took it personally. And then when Erica takes something personal, she's vile. And she did say that her, that, that Denise's 14 year old daughter at the time, I don't care what she's doing now. She's a 19 year old woman. She's allowed to do whatever she wants with her body. At the time, she was a 14 year old child. And Erica did say that her 14 year old child. Yes, yeah, inappropriate. Was probably already doing threesomes. And that was completely disrespectful. Gross, and disgusting, disgusting, and, and weird. Wrong. And, I, and Denise had every right 
to mm-hmm. now she's seeing her to check her about it. And that's why she was pissed. I don't think it had anything to do with Brandy. I don't think it had anything to do with that. And, er- and for Erica to bring up um, Sammy's fans only account to me was disgusting and deflecting from, from the core problem. She didn't, Denise didn't say today you're talking about my adult child and her sexuality. She said, when my child was a minor, 14 years old, you on national and television said she was already doing threesomes. Maybe that's why Sammy's on fans only now, because you have adult people saying she's at 14 years old being sexually active, doing threesomes. (laughs) So that was the issue. And Erica was wrong. She, and Denise yeah. wasn't being a hypocrite. There's a difference between saying a 14-year-old child is having threesomes versus a 19-year-old adult who chooses to be on a very um, legal public platform. And for her to equate the two is disgusting. Because when Eileen didn't even say anything bad about uh, Erica's adult mm-hmm. male 30-year-old police officer son, mm-hmm. she lost her damn mind. And it's like, okay, so if somebody says something about your adult son who was a police officer, you lose your mind and you attack them the way she did um, Eileen, but you're allowed to say that a 14-year-old child is having threesomes and their mother isn't allowed to check you for that, but you check the hell out of Eileen when she Uh, she just made uh, a comment about uh, your son? Mm -mm. Mm-mm. Not today. No. I, I agree I agree when she personal, personalized it that was a bit effed up but but what you know that and to as you say compared to but 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 there were some things though which I disagreed with Denise and that was who's making the salt and pepper ASMR in the background <laughs> um and that that was that was um when Adam, can she, you and your intense like ears calm down? I like swallowed a pill. You're like, oh my god, there's a sound. Yeah, I'm breathing. I'm <laughs> I'm alive. I'm very sorry. I'm just kidding. yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> and that that was when she said that that teenagers um, aren't aware. It's just a totally different scene, though. She was like trying to be the holy of the now, saying t- teenagers don't know about sex and all this stuff when they were when they were at a group when they were at, discussing that at the table and, and what have you that 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 is simply not true but but, but, but with the hot- know, but you know why that still doesn't even work because there's a difference between saying your child knows about it versus your child is doing them and yeah, that, that's a, and that, that and that is what that's what Denise's point was. It wasn't about awareness. Does a person know this exists versus is this person doing it? And that is where Erica messed up. If she would have left it at, oh, I'm sure, I'm sure your daughter knows what a threesome is. There's the internet. All teen, uh, but teenagers know what threesomes are. Fine, put a pin yeah. in. It, no problem. But that's not Agreed. where she left it. She kept going and said, it, if she's not doing them herself. That is where yeah. Erica crossed yeah. the line, and that is where yeah, she that was messed up. Ar- and that's where she loses the argument mm. every single time. If she would have left it at, I'm sure she knows what it is. She has a phone, you know, Google, whatever. Fine, she would she would be right. I'm sure everybody knows what it is at this point. But to imply that a 14 year old girl is having threesomes, that's where she loses every day. Every single day. And then to bring up her fans only is disgusting because you don't know what trauma Sammy has gone through. You know who her father is and what he's done. And to bring that up of why she's on fans only, that's like, come on, that's disgusting. And I don't care how old Sammy is. That's still Denise's child. That is still her child. True. Yeah, True. yeah, disturbing, True. hate it. On, on this hill, Erica dies every time. Yeah, you're never going to win, boo-boo. You might as well back away time. slowly. She's never going to win this Yeah, time. Agree, agreed, agreed. One, agreed, know? agreed, agreed. And I, and, and I think where Denise um, failed was that she didn't come with it from a place of clarity. Like, if she hadn't been so sloppy and all over the place, and I think if she was very succinct and very, like, Dun, dun, dun. Then I think she would have won. But the problem, because she was in the right, it was just she was out of her mind. <laughs> and yeah, that's where yeah. she loses. And that's where Erica gets to muddy the waters with this whole only fans only crap. Whereas it's just like it's apples to oranges. Don't sex yeah. me, my daughter, to justify you saying that at 14 years old she was having sex with multiple people at the same time. That's disgusting. 
So, sidebar, do you yeah. do you want do you want Denise to ever return to the show? Or I would like to have like... Denise back. She's a vibe. She's a vibe. Yeah, like when all the girls got got lunch after the um, weed party, when it was like Sutton and Denise. I think Camille, Camille was even there and Garcelle, and they were having fun and laughing, kicking. It was a vibe because those pockets of funness is what I like about the show. Like when, like the same thing. Why I liked Erica and Garcelle and Sutton. I like them better as friends than enemies. It's a hundred. They're having fun. I like Denise. Denise gets along well with Sutton. She gets along well with Garcelle. Um, she beefed it out with Erica. I think Denise would be great. I would love to have her back. And I also just like her. I think she's a very likable person. That's why she works all the time in Hollywood. She's a very likable person. And I yes. think that that's a also a um. A character or person person personality type that's also missing because I like Garcelle, I like Sutton, but there's a certain likability about Denise mm -hmm. effing Richards that none of the women's really have, and I think she would I think she would be great back on the show. I think it's unfortunate that she let Lisa Rena sabotage her because because she let Lisa Rena win. Lisa Rinna wanted to sabotage her. She wanted her to leave the show. She wanted to take her down because she was jealous of her. I mean, 100. I think she was very unprepared for the level of sabotage and like just backstabbery that she was going to get. Exactly. Denise was not prepared. She didn't under she didn't understand the game. She didn't know what the assignment was. She didn't know. And, the, and this is it genuinely caught her up off guard. <laughs> she didn't know going in and she would have opponents and she didn't know that the person she thought would have her back was the one who was stabbing her in it yeah yeah to I, be fair I, I, that's understandable to me mm -hmm. i i agree i feel that for me camille comes before her in terms of old cast members i would like back that will possibly come back as a high chance mm -hmm. but for, um denise i i like her because she's kind of got that as you said that hollow that hollywood energy because you know she's in all these movies and what have you um i do believe the brandy situation unfortunately because that she did not go about that the right way um but i do believe that rena was jealous by you know you you could what rena with her I, I like what how Garcelle described Rena. There was moments where she really was good for the show, but Garcelle said, you know, sometimes people who were good for the show n changed their ways and they got to go. And mm. uh, and I feel with Rena, she did do a lot for the show, but she just, I something. So, it's, what I want to know is 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 what. Is what happened in season nine for for Rena to orchestrate the whole situation with Kyle because I believe that Kyle's kiss ass producer friends or best friends, whatever they go by now, wanted the Lisa Vanderpump showdown thing to happen. And and from the Lisa Vanderpump showdown, we then had in in season um 10 for denise situation and then and then since then it's just been let's pick on Sutton and garcelle and act pathetic uh and it, it's just that was the main driver was that season um nine something happened between eight and nine because they were like oh oh damn we casted some boring uh daughter of a famous country singer and then they wanted to, to go attack him. Is, him. is John Malakav a country singer? Or whatever he is. I, I think he is, isn't he? I, I honestly, have, I, could, I couldn't tell you a, Mel a John Malakav song. <laughs> he, can do, mean, he can do hardcore rap for all I know. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 like, I have no idea. <laughs> but, but, do you, but do you know what I mean? That ever since yeah. the end of season, season eight, Kyle and Renner planned this whole thing to happen and and then Rena felt like she had the power to then do bad with Denise and I don't really I forget what the major drama in season 11 was aside from saying that Sutton was racist uh, what 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 actually happened in season 11 
I don't even remember. Like all the years are just blending <laughs> together, no to be honest. No I could not tell you 11 from 12 or 10. <laughs> like, you know I, what I mean? I mean, I can tell yeah. you 12. I don't have that kind of inventory in my mind. 12 was that they, um, well, the per the person blocks me, but um, <laughs> someone, so, 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 someone from a fellow, someone, someone, someone from a fellow from a fellow um, Eastern European near, very near the UK, um, who married a British banker then divorced him. Try. Oh, okay. oh what, yeah, I forgot about her. Uh, what was was planning on? Was that last with year? Rena. Yes. We, okay. So we, last year we, was fifteen or fourteen. So th this 13. is sixteen. What season no, is this? Is thirteen. Last we're, year we're, was... in, we're in season thirteen. Oh wow! I thought yeah. it was last no, season. My was bad. No, 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 Natasha was telling us the future that Kyle's still going to be here. <laughs> okay. uh, I hope uh, not. Uh, uh, um, that was but, a nightmare but, prophecy. But but we but with um but but we've seen that that individual um yeah they they blocked me because i i said that they were i mean that's probably were, for uh, the best adam <laughs> I, I, I said i said i i said that they're boring and that 2.0 and then yeah uh but so you told but, them the truth <laughs> yes um but so no but lies they, were detected got no you. Lies but, detected. but but arguably they were a bit more than that not 2.0 because of I mean, actions, but yeah, but, you could but, have tacked but, on but, evils, but, terrifying, and, uh, 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 <laughs> and, and, and and what have you. But 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 um but 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 uh, was it? She blocked Freddie as well because because he he went further deeper than that than I did. He he actually said he. But, I but, didn't say but, a word. But, I don't want but, that that but, evil but, but, directed. But but, but even, even though but I'm even, protected. But even yeah. but but all all jokes aside, Lisa Renner then thought that she could do that, um, go against Gus, try and do Garcelle and Sutton, let me look for moments thing with this person. They just hired off. They, but but to, I I think Renner leaving the show, we all needed that toxicity to go. But yeah. there's something there's just something weird with her not being there. I, I, it's hard to describe. Like in terms of, like, I don't think it's action, weird because the re well, I think because she was there for so long. Um, I I want someone who doesn't isn't toxic, but someone that can kind of spice things up a bit. I want Garcelle and Sutton and Erica to have someone like well, them that who spice them up a bit. Not, you know what? You know what it is. We if you want someone, someone non toxic, then that's not Lisa. <laughs> no, no, we need someone. Yeah, I don't, is... I don't, I don't, I don't want Lisa back. I'm saying I want someone like them, like like Garcelle and Sutton and Erica, who can spice things up because Rena did spice things the up. The problem is, is I don't know if these women are capable of that because the game has turned this way. So it's like all of a sudden everyone else is just like, it's almost like the goalpost was moved and now this is the boundaries that people are willing to cross now. And it's hard to like close that Pandora's box. You know what I mean? You know what it is? We need someone who is very, very, very rich, but also very eccentric. Yes. Almost yes. Like a, that's like, just goofy. Like a, like uh, like Patricia from Southern Charm. We need yes. someone like that on the show. Someone who is very eccentric, but has a crap ton of money. And we can just see like, they don't work. They're not trying to get us to, you know, buy their bedazzled hats or, you know, listen to their Patreon or- They're just sashaying know, around their, their mansion and calf stands. They're just, they, they have calf hands. They have jewels dripping off. They're just flying, you know, let's just go for the day to the Maldives. Let's take a dip in the beach. Let's go to St. Bart's and just chill. And they have all this money, but they mm -hmm. also have gravitas where because that's what they're missing they're miss they're missing the matriarch of the show the woman who has a lot of money she's super eccentric but people listen almost and like, she gathers um, the ladies together in a good gather way. and gathers like almost yeah. like what's her name uh what on on miami what is yes. her name? What, why can't i think of her um name? mary saul's mother we need someone like that oh why can't no. i think of her name i can't think of her name either rest in peace but did, did, I did need you someone like that who has almost what? like a Karen Hooger type person, like the matriarch who comes in, gathers the girls, and 
and but has like the decadence and the money who doesn't care about their reputation because they got the money they don't care they're not worried about it they're coming onto the show and it's fine because because i to to me i so so you said the other week you'll watch you're already watching lady to london right yeah what so after the show ended um marissa and matt packed their bags to go to back to la, LA. Yeah. they're now they're now in pacific pa palisades um stanbury is able to go on a show but we don't know if, if it's going to get a second season because it was meant to come out this yeah dubai is never coming back i don't know it's, it's all over the place it's weird it yeah. was meant to come wait it was meant for to come real out. No, I'm joking. Like it's, I just, it's like it's taken five hundred years. It's, they said November, oh, yeah. then they said, then they said January, and 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 what have you? Some people saying not even until May now. They're just taken five hundred years. See, I get but, bored uh, with that. I don't like when they make me wait too long. But but but, I think someone like Marissa would be a good fit. I mean, she she knows Kyle. She knows Sutton. Who is she knows. This? Mar Marissa, Marissa Herma from Lazy. She knows oh. the, she knows a lot of the cast as it is. Oh, is that the uh, one that had the guy that owned the restaurants? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then she's American. Uh, Are they back in LA uh, now? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. But but uh, and really the restaurant um Olivetta. Oh. I mean, I went to I went to their um Elsa. I went to, El Elsa, that's it. Yes, Thank um, you, but but that that's one of the people that I think they could they could put on, and in in ter in terms of it, 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 honestly, it, it, I, I would I would want to I I would either want to reboot or a new city with Marissa and like her friends rather than bringing her into this group and i'd rather have garcelle sutton ugh, and maybe erica do sort of like a crappy lake spinoff oh god because i, I, I don't, don't i don't like luann oh god i didn't watch that no i didn't watch it either no I'm but then like, then find a town because and they all go on dates with the some, men there yeah they can go on dates and they can be you know whatever like you know like they're dating but no because people. erica might try to steal all the old people's money and I'm oh, <laughs> or something or something like that but i think that i just hide your purses like, grandmas yeah, hide your men, hide your purses, hide your emails, hide your social hide your, security numbers, hide your, social, hide your earrings, hide your Medicaid card, your Medicare oh card, hide them. No, um, I think that uh, I don't know. I just think settled that in checks, keep I, them I, locked I, away. You know, sorry, stimulus checks. Watch out, guys. <laughs> no, I think that I just think it. What is going on in Beverly Hills right now? It's it's. The, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. I think it should be a reboot with new people, either like maybe the Palisades or the Pasadena or whatever the case may be, or someplace. With the uh, fresh Pasadena people. means that Erica. Pasadena means that Erica to stay. She was a former resident. No, she has, she gets to go. Or the Palisades, or Calabasas, or something. I don't know, or something like uh, that. But but with like all like I would love like Marissa, but with like her fresh new people. Yeah, and I want to see her and friends. Then we can take the people who are. Why don't they like just do a, and a do new different show with her. And, and then do different spinoffs? Maybe she doesn't want to be but, back, or but, I don't know. Who knows? But, but, yeah. but because because like to me, someone like that, like Marissa. You know they they weren't you know they they were able to spell it out you know may, not not in the way that like Sutton does it but kind of you know how how Gar Garcel or Lisa Vanderpump spells it out so uh, especially mm -hmm. like she wasn't quite like Lisa Vanderpump in this in the same swiftness but she she had the same um, way of doing things and and like I don't know I, I feel that with um, with, with the other problem with this show is that there are just too many you newer wish um people you know i as i as i said at this at the very start i i watched this show because it was a life that i didn't see you know these beverly park houses right. eighteen thousand square feet they were huge of course. and and, and camille's Ma malibu oasis now, now the show is just these free Encino people, and 
you know, Garza, free and see no people. <laughs> I, agree. Like, I agree. Like, I, I want you, the aspiration back where it's like you can kind of like get lost nah. and be like, well, like one day I'll have like these diamonds and this and all of this stuff and like it's like a vibe and it's fun. You know what I mean? Like not, I but, agree with but, you. Not for but, nothing. But, but, I was watching. I was just like reviewing um the first. Um, I was just like, because I finished watching um, Southern Charm this year. It's a really good season, by the way. Recommend it. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, oh, you know what? I forget how this show started because it was it started kind of weird because there was nothing really like it. And so I just took a trip back toward memory lane. And Patricia says some, like, that stuff would not fly now. Mm -hmm. Like, she should have been canceled and then some. It's pretty crazy. The stuff that comes out of that lady's mouth. But, I mean, there were different times back then, I guess. Whatever. But, yeah, it's a really, it's an interesting show. I recommend revisiting it, too. And Catherine, yeah, it's a whole other world. Yeah. And Shep actually looks hot when he was young. I told you. I know. I forgot. I told you. Yeah. Yeah. He's so tall and he has that, like, the, like, the, the, like, loose curled Clark yeah. Kent kind of hair. And yeah. you're just like, oh. It's just so, it's, at, what, what happened to him and Kath that are both sad, where it's just, like, substances and things They like were that. both, like, really attractive, promising people. And then, yeah. like, yeah, it is sad. Yeah. Hey, Chels, you want to sound off before we wind out? Yes. Hey, y'all. Hey, Kathy. Hey. Hey. Hey, Charles. Hey. Hey. Hi. Happy Monday. You too. Um, happy MLK yeah. Day. Yes. Happy MLK Day. Yes. Um, yes. Nothing, Candy. I like the, you know, the tea that you dropped today. It's very good on Beverly Hills. And I agree with pretty much what everyone was saying. Um, it's just like a dry season and, you know, who you guys would replace. Um, Anne-Marie can go. Um, I think I agree with what you said, Candy. Like she probably would have, like she probably could have had a chance had she just came in more authentically, not just like Kyle's mm -hmm. little soldier, like minion. Yep. Just didn't like read well, you know. And then now, it's like backtracking. And I feel like I don't know if you've seen her like respond back to Doctor Nicole and like what she said. And I'm just like, girl, you're not like everyone. Everyone loves Doctor Nicole. Like you can't. Don't try to come after her either. Ooh, what did she say? Nothing like, nothing like really that bad, but she, I felt like she tried to like, uh, downplay is not the right word, but the way that Anne-Marie basically stated how Dr. Nicole, like she could have picked up the phone and called her. That's kind of like, I remember her, how she said it. She was like, you know, she could have called me. I just seen her at BravoCon and like, da, 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 da. And it's like, Anne-Marie, stop it. Like the other doctor had just said something. She's like an Asian woman. Dr. Um, Moon. And Dr. Moon. Ti and Tiffany. Moon. Yeah. She's great. Yes. She had said something. And then, um, you know, Dr. Nicole had said something. So she only referenced, I don't, I, at least I didn't hear her reference Dr. Bloom, but it was only um, Dr. Nicole that she referenced. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm kind of over the season. I feel like the seasons that used to be really good, like Beverly Hills and Potomac and Atlanta, they're kind of failing. Yeah, I'm know? over all of them. And oh, I don't know, because like Salt Lake, when it came out, I did not, I didn't like it how I like it now. I really right? Like I'm like, I was not I'm expecting to it. like it. That's why watched... we need to reboot everyone. And if you think about it, it goes back to our five-year arc. It, yeah. um, Salt Lake City is about to go into its fifth year. And look, we all love it now. Yeah. See? Yeah. Keep yeah. going, Chels. Well, well, we will with Monica <laughs> Ghost. Yeah, yeah, Monica. I don't know, y'all. I really think she's coming back. I don't know. I'm just, I'm prepping myself, but she comes back because, you know, it's just going to be, is what it is. But I could just only do one more season. Like, please. please. I, honestly, I'm going to have to cut out if she returns because, like, I can't no, handle I just, it. I love Lisa. And I, I love really Lisa like, too. like to like Mar uh, Meredith, yeah. too. Like, I didn't realize. When Meredith and Lisa like are her. together, I like them. Yes. How much I cared for her, you yeah. know? So I think like they're just, they're having a flop. And I, sorry, I didn't watch it. Um, I didn't watch it like that back in the day when they were really good. Beverly Hills, excuse me, Beverly Hills. So I don't know what this whole hype about Kyle is about. Like why she thinks she is the queen of Beverly Hills or Be someone. Because the some producers, people, because the producers are her friends. Like a Giselle? That 
No, no the producers like are have no. No, not it's it's even worse. The producers have been up at us even before the show came. She kind of they... is the originator of the like. I think I'm I'm pretty sure everyone. You know how there's always like how Lisa, like they came to Lisa first. Well, because I think uh, Kyle has been in the industry for a while. I think they kind of came to her first. And no, they were going to do something with the three sisters. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's, so that's how why, it started. That's why, because oh. yes. Kyle, it was Sorry, Kyle, yeah. yeah, it was Kyle, Kathy, and Kim. And it was supposed to be a reality show about the three of them. But then Kim and Kathy backed out. And this is the thing. The reason why Kyle is so close to the producers is because in the beginning, it was like their show. So they have this sort of like close loyalty that then evolved into the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Very similar to what happened in Potomac, to be honest with you. Because and Potomac in the beginning, like you literally see um, the one girl open up her gate, walk across the cul-de-sac and go into the other lady's gate. Like they're literally neighbors. Yeah, at least and go, knock on, the, Adrian, and go knock on the door <laughs> and walk in her house. Like it was really like that. <laughs> Natasha, you can't be doing Adrian like that, other lady. <laughs> I forgot about her. <laughs> I mean, but but that's because the producers are up at arse. I mean, the whole the whole thing is that, like, as I as I as I was saying earlier, Kyle has taken them on holiday, like at least for the last seven years. Like I remember, I, I've seen all the pictures of her just boasting how she's got this friendship. And it's just it's just really annoying because face it, the reality is she may she may just be associated with someone famous, but that doesn't mean they're entertaining. <laughs> you know right. she knows entertaining yeah. people, but that doesn't make her entertaining. But, be, because because uh because well also just in the very early seasons, I looked at some press for the shows like season two season three just the other day it was just bored at, at, because i couldn't sleep because it's got so cold here um and it's just crazy um and kyle was just like um you must remember i'm i'm paris hilton's aunt and she says she said that to a lot of the interviewers you you must remember <laughs> and it's just no. like it's it's like please like you know at the end of the day you know i i mean <laughs> Using your using your niece as a as ammunition to <laughs> big up can yourself say, is a, can it's a bit weird. Though, like I really hope at the reunion, I hope the producers or Bravo pulls up like a card from Twitter or X saying like to Kyle, why was it okay for you to blow off, you know, LVP when she lost her brother? Like she was going through things too. And then she's like trying to say for Sutton. Do you guys remember that? Like earlier in the they, I feel like they did watch year. What Happens Live and her did response they, did they was ask ridiculous. That already? Yeah, and her response was like something like ridiculous. Like and how they even let her get away with the response she had is beyond me. It's like I think mm -hmm. I think the difference now would be the fact that Kyle has now lost someone to True. them taking their own, you know, how it happened. And yeah, Lisa lost you know two people. Saying. So I do think it would be interesting. To, her brother and her mom. Yeah, her brother and her mother. Or her brother, yeah. Crazy. And I, and we we talked about this, how I think it was um the video we did on Kyle being the most hypocritical housewife. And I think, bravo, if you're listening, go watch that video. Because I do think it would be interesting <laughs> to have both Sutton address it as well. Because she was very dismissive to Sutton when Sutton was talking about how she was coping, you know, with um, gun violence and what her father, how her father passed away. And Kyle was very dismissive to her, like, whatever, like, you're making it about yourself. This is about Dorit and blah, 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 when she was talking about her stuff. Mm -hmm. And like how she said to, um, the irony here is that the same exact thing that Kyle is losing her damn mind about and blowing up her 27 year marriage, you know, to Mauricio, you're busy. You don't appreciate me. You're not paying attention to me is exactly what she said to Lisa Vanderpump. She looked at her when Lisa's talking about the death yeah. of her brother and she literally yes. said, we all have stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. same exact that, thing. That, it, that, that was so fucked up. Outrageous it's crazy. That was so, that so, was so messed, effed up. So messed up. And so the same exact thing she did to, to Lisa, isn't it crazy? Now, years later, her husband is doing to her basically like, Kyle, 
I got other things going on. But I got the association of having an affair with. Brain doesn't even have the I got capacity to recognize I'm that. Up with. I got the agency that I'm opening in every other country in the world. I got buying Beverly Hills. I got everything on but you, sweetheart. Crazy how that <laughs> turned around. <laughs> Everyone but you, sweetheart. <laughs> Karma has everybody's address, and she's always on time. So, mm -mm. Yeah, but she doesn't even have the capacity. Her narcissistic brain does not even have the capacity to even connect that. Because, no, because she is no the ultimate what, victim in her mind. Victim. And she will never, she ever. Her so bad? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. You know what I mean? It's like we could talk all day and we could hope for them to turn this around. But at the end of the day, we've all met these people. They're not turning it around anytime soon. A hundred percent. But wait, um, about four days ago, yeah, four days ago, um, um, a Andy tweeted out, please send your questions for the Beverly Hills reunion. Uh, I, I submitted two. Can I read you my questions? Yes, please do. Um, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Adam from London, United Kingdom. My question is for Sutton. S Sutton, who in the group do you trust the least and why is that? That's number one. And question two, uh, Adam from London, question for Garcelle. Garcelle, in recent years, you have formed a friendship with Lisa Vanderpump. With your help, do you believe you could restore her friendship with Kyle, or has Kyle burnt that bridge for life? And I, I basically want to hear Garcelle say at the reunion, Kyle, you burnt that bridge for life. She's <laughs> <laughs> gonna be like, I'm gonna have no parts in it. <laughs> Kyle, you've burnt, that, you've burnt that bridge for life. But who do you think like Sutton Kyle, actually... that door is closed by? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Who do you think Sutton actually trusts the least, though? Being real, aside from 8.5, because they don't count, because they're not a real cast member. <laughs> I think she trusts Erica the least because I think that just because they're getting along, she the she doesn't know when Erica will turn. Okay, Natasha, what do you think? And chills. I almost was gonna say Dorit and maybe Erica I like I said I don't I watched I don't really know their relationships like in the beginning seasons and like how they played out but um I would think like maybe it would say Erica or probably Dorit mm -hmm. but I don't know I feel like um I kind of was in and out of the live candy so I missed kind of the points with Dorit and um Kyle but you, you were saying that you believe um, um, that it's not because of Morgan. It's because of the rumors that were out there. Yeah, because it doesn't make any sense that um, it doesn't make any sense that Kyle doesn't like Dorit because of Morgan Wade. Why? That doesn't make any sense. She still has all her other friends. Um, I think that Kyle doesn't like Dorit because of the rumors that Dorit was having an affair with Mauricio. And then the fact that Dorit vocally, not even went against her, but just had her own opinion about stuff with Kyle that Kyle didn't like. That she wasn't being her just like, yes person. I think that's mm -hmm. the real reason why their friendship has um, devolved. Not because of that. Do you think she was showing signs of that? Like while those rumors has, like when they started? Or do you feel that way, how, how she like said it? Like, we, we've never been on It probably together. kicked off off camera, like those thoughts for her. I don't think it crossed those Kyle's thoughts. mind until we were talking about it. I don't think there were any signs. I, th I, think it, I think it popped up once the blogosphere caught on to it. And when you think about it, filming was done by then. So that technically would have been off camera, you know? once Because we're watching it. So were they it. having little like flirty moments on camera? Well, when he kissed her, she kissed him on his shoulder, and there was yeah. like all that. Remember that whole thing? Where yeah. they're like, that's, yeah, they were like, that's awfully sensual, Dory. Yeah. yeah. Kelly says, at Candy, please read. Kyle says that the show regarding LVP was produced due to LVP wanting to be off the show. I mean, that's obviously a lie. If LVP wanted, if Lisa wanted off the show, all she had to do was quit. They're not slaves. That's just Kyle lying, trying to cover herself up if she said that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, if Kyle and Dorit do go at it, I feel like they did have a like a genuine friendship. So if they do go at it, that'll be something that I feel like that's not actually manufactured. Like I think that there really will be like yeah, that would be refreshing actually. Like a, to see like a real authentic, beef, you know. Exactly. Um, hopefully, like 
you know, I feel, I feel like we all raise our hands when we know like the Kyle and Morgan thing is total like PR stunt. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I do kind of feel bad that her divorce with Mauricio, I thought was staged. I thought mm -hmm. it was just a stunt, you know, and I was no, like, that's very much coming real. Out. It's very much real. Yeah. On the yeah. last episode, she said, she literally verbatim almost said exactly what the psychic said the 10 years ago. Like, I want to be fulfilled. Literally. And respect me. I had got chills down to the exact words. Like, literally, like, down. And I was like, okay, did she rehearse that part? Is this just like what she's saying? And I did feel kind of bad because I just was like, dang, I think about the kids and everything. And like, it's still like hard, you know? So I don't know. That part I was just like, dang, I guess that's real. But her with the whole, you know, let's get it, let's have the paparazzi here and ask them to get a picture of Brianna. I'm like, Kyle, like just go away. Like, just go away. And now Kyle's <laughs> saying that Dorit exaggerated the closeness of their friendship and that they didn't go on that many trips and stuff. I don't I can't. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> you guys, I'm starving. Yeah, yeah, I'm like <laughs> eating right <laughs> now. Candy yeah, this was so info. much Thanks, fun. Thanks, Candy, per use. We all You're welcome. You. We will definitely be back live Thursday to discuss Salt Lake City and Beverly Hills. So, and you know, we're gonna have stuff to say then. Yeah. Bye. Mwah. Hi, Bye, everybody. Shout out to my beautiful panelists. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Chels. Shout out to my wonderful chat. You guys were lit tonight. I love you guys. Thank you so much for holding me down. Shout out to Miss T, my mod, and everybody else who was chatting and having fun. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And we also have our new conspiracy t-shirts. You can shop at the link pinned at the top or go to candywashington.com backslash shop um, and grab your t-shirt. We have it in black, white, dark gray, and navy blue. It says conspiracy, never coincidence. And we'll be having more merch dropping as well. So if you have any suggestions or requests, let me know. Um, you can email me. You can DM me. You can email or DM is the best because I don't always get every single comment. Um, so try it that way to, to get at me. But everything is linked down um, below in the show notes. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, SW. Thank you, Chocolate Chunks. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, everybody, for holding me down. I really appreciate you. And I will talk to you guys next time. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss it when we go live. And yes. Oh, and watch out because I got a couple of questions. So when I do these big lives, I break up the stories into smaller videos. So if you see on my channel the smaller video that we already had in the longer one, that's why I'm not duplicating content. I'm just doing shorter videos. So that way people who didn't watch the live or they're only interested in one story can go and find that story. So just a heads up. So thank you, Adam. Thank you, guys. All right, you guys. Love you. Everybody stay safe. Happy MLK um, weekend. Happy MLK, MLK day. Take care of yourself. I love you guys. Bye.